يقتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. Hello and welcome to our live show. Welcome. God bless you. I hope everybody is doing okay. Welcome guys. How are you? Let me say hi to Romeo D'Amelio. Richard Paulus, Jan Villegas, Debit Ray, Phil Herrera, Zepp, Peter De Wall, Rana Hanna. How are you guys? Uh, there are many of you actually, guys, if I cannot mention all of your names. Bear with me. God bless you. I hope everyone is healthy and well, especially from the coronavirus. Uh, keep everyone in your prayers guys these are very uh, difficult times for many people uh, I will try to keep everybody in my prayers pray for me too pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world including our admins our many warriors in Christ who are doing our kind of job how are you guys? I hope everybody is doing okay. Can you hear me? Is my vo voice sound and clear guys? Is, is it loud and clear? I hope my sound is coming through. I know I didn't do a live show for a couple of days, a lot of days. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. So it seems that my sound is okay. Yeah, I, I didn't do a live show for a couple of days. Uh, maybe you noticed that guys. I'm really busy and you know because of the corona and my personal life uh, you know that me and my wife I'm very busy preparing uh, a room for our baby in our house so you know you know how uh, how that can be right you know you have you will have a small idea why your option is busy at the moment you know and like I said, with the corona that's spreading all over the place. It is what it is, guys. Don't worry. We have Christ on our side, right? We have Christ in our side. And many people ask, why? Why there are so many diseases, many pain, many suffering in the world? Well, because mankind chose on their free will to go against our holy living God. And when we got disconnected from God, sin and all everything that comes with sin entered the flesh, entered mankind, including diseases, including pain and suffering, right? We didn't have that when we were connected with God in the Garden of Eden. So when we chose to go against God, we brought this on ourselves. This is why we need Jesus. This is why we need to be reunited with God. And who is the only person who can get us connected with God except Jesus Christ. Muhammad cannot save you. Muhammad himself didn't know what Allah would do to him. Right? He didn't know when people asked him. He didn't know what Allah would do to him. So welcome guys, <clears throat> I chose today's <clears throat> topic Prophet Muhammad sent to every nation, that's the topic of today basically because I had a conversation with a Muslim and I will tell you in a moment what the conversation was all about but before we actually start guys I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so our live stream can be blessed. Pray with me guys. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you Lord for, for my lovely audience and subscribers who are always supporting us day in day out. 
for many months now. Please bless them and bless their families and keep them safe, Lord. Keep us all healthy and safe, including the Muslims who always curse us and insult us because we are followers of Christ. Please, Lord, keep us all healthy and safe and don't allow any of your children to get this coronavirus. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception, taqiyya, mekr, lies, or any doubt, Lord. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth, Lord. Please open also their eyes so they also can be saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame, Lord. Please give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Welcome for the people who just joined in. On this live show today, we are live on air. We will have the opportunity to investigate if Muhammad was sent as prophet to all mankind. To all mankind. Is Muhammad actually a prophet to all mankind? We will also go through some other topics to see if anyone should follow such a man like Muhammad in 2020. A desert, illiterate man, as the Muslims claim him to be, an illiterate desert 1400 years ago. Should you actually follow his teaching and accept him as a prophet now in 2020? Anything Muhammad said will be used against him in the court of law. So I hope he has Allah as his personal attorney present during today's hearing to defend him in the court of law. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests, as always, in the live chat. And hopefully we will have also Muslims who might call us live on Skype. Let me open my Skype. We're live on air, guys. Hopefully, we'll have Muslims who might call us for a nice and respectful discussion. So if you call yourself a man, if you call yourself a Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge, please call us live on Skype. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. And our admin here, Phil Horayer, already posted the Skype ID in the live chat. So let us start, guys. Welcome. Hello. Peace of Christ to you, all of you, including the Muslims. We know that you Muslims always curse us day in, day out, at least 70 times a day when you recite your Shahada. Right, Muslims? You ask Allah to not curse you like the Jews and the Christians, right, Muslims? How wonderful, huh? How loving and merciful of you to curse us, to repeat the curses of Allah on us. Yeah, Jesus forbids giving salam to the unbelievers. Yeah, right, Muhammad Amin. Yeah, right. Anyway, guys, anyway, anyway. My topic of today, Prophet Muhammad. Is he truly sent to every nation? Allahu Akbar. Allah wa Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Is that anything you have to say? Asadun Asaudin Awaisi. I think you're a Muslim from Africa. That's. I think that's what your name is telling me. If you have the courage and the knowledge to debate me live right here, right now. I ask you to download Skype. You can download it on your phone or your iPhone on Android phone and you can call us live. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian. Allahu Akbar. Let's see if Allah will help you today if you debate me. 
Muslims, the one million dollar question, is Muhammad sent to every nation? Is Muhammad for everyone? I don't know how to operate Skype. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, if you can operate your phone, you can operate Skype. You can download it as an app. You put your Outlook email address or your Gmail email address, whatever email address you have, you can put it in, log in, and you can use Skype. Stop the lies and excuses, man. Have you live, been living under a stone? Really? I don't know how to use Skype, brother. Really, Muslims? <laughs> uh, I really, uh, you know, I really believe you, man. I, I believe you, man. Brother, I can't use Skype, brother. I do have a phone, but I don't know how to use Skype, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, ask Allah to teach you how to install Skype and use it. And maybe you can call us. I mean, look, I'm live. Right? I'm live. We are live on air. Here's my Skype. My Skype is open. Call me. Let us have a nice discussion. And maybe you can tell us why you think Islam is the truth. Why would you be a Muslim still in 2020? I mean, if you don't dare to call us live, maybe you, your dad can call me. Maybe your imam or ustaz can call me. No, Rob Christian, it doesn't say that, Rob Christian. How to Skype. <laughs> Guys, as we know, as we know, there are around 420 million people around the world who actually speak and understand the Arabic language. Only 420 million people. What, Rob Christian? That's the only number? Yes, bro. That, so that means more than 75% of all Muslims on this planet do not speak Arabic. Wow! So are you saying that less than 25% of the Muslim population only know Arabic? Yes. So that means, guys, that automatically means that... The majority of Muslims are dependent on the lies, taqiyya, and deception of their Muslim scholars. This is why Islam is a huge business for the Muslim scholars. You can basically say anything you want as a scholar and the Muslims will believe you because they think you are telling them the truth because the majority of Muslims do not speak Arabic as we showed you. Uh, Natis is asking, hey brother Natis, how are you my friend? How they read the Quran then? Well they read the Quran they <laughs> by only reading translation. But when we quote the Quran, when we show them the Quran, they say, no, no, you have to go to the Arabic, brother, to understand. But you, Abdul, yeah, Abdul, son of Abdul, you yourself don't know Arabic and you're telling me to go to the Arabic Quran? <laughs> well, uh, here you go. You have an Arabic speaker in the shape of Rob Christian. I know Arabic. Come at me, bro. Call me live. Hey, let us have a nice discussion, man. Send me a message. Call me. If you... Don't know how to uh, how Skype works. Send me a message. I will call you back, brother. You don't know Arabic, brother. You don't speak Arabic, man. What kind of nation? Uh, Islam is, man. You don't know Arabic, brother. You don't know Islam, man. You're ignorant, Abdul, man. Uh, I mean, Christian, man. You're ignorant. You don't know anything about Islam, man. You don't speak Arabic, man. Any other excuses, Muslim? So you see, guys, the majority of all Muslims 
the majority of Muslims on this planet do not speak Arabic. So uh, they are dependent on the translations of their scholars of the Quran and Hadith. There is nothing like Allah. No creation resembles to Allah in any way. Jesus is a creation. Asadun, prove to me who Allah is. Can you tell us who Allah is, man? Can you tell us who Allah is? Have you seen Allah? I mean, when you, you say the Shahada, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah. When you say, I, wit I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his Rasul, Muhammad is his messenger. When you say, I bear witness, do you know what I bear witness means? Have you seen Muhammad? Have you seen Allah himself to be a witness? I mean, imagine guys, if I go to court, let's say I, God forbid, I went on the streets, right? I went on the street and I saw someone killing another person, right? Let's say with a gun. Maybe uh, there was a guy driving and he drove on another person. He killed him while driving. And I saw it as a witness. That means I'm the one who saw it actually happened. So when you say, I bear witness in your shahada, in your shahada, when you say, I bear witness, did you see it? Did you see Muhammad to bear witness? Did you see Allah to bear witness that he is the only God? You see, the shahada does not make sense at all, brother. I bear witness? Were you there? Did you see Jibreel? Did you, Abdul, did you see Jibreel with your own eyes? So how do you, how dare you to say I bear witness? Do your shahada is nonsense, it's messed up. I bear witness? I challenge you to show me and witness to me and, and be, give me evidence that Allah has two right hands. Exactly, Mr. Arun. You Muslims claim that Allah has two right hands. Okay, prove it to me. Prove to me that Allah has not have ten legs or maybe six hands. I bear witness, brother, that there is no one else but Allah as God. Did you see Allah? Did you see Jibreel to be a witness? No, brother, but you know, I bear witness, brother. But how? No, no mercy. Welcome guys, for the people who just joined in, you are not late, we just started actually, I'm just going through some Muslims their chat, in the live chat, right? Cowards, man. Mr. Muhammad Amin, call me, ya, ya Munafiq, ya Jaban ibn Jaban, call me, call me. Ya Muhammad Amin, call me. You, you are Abdul, son of Abdul. Jesus is not my topic today, but since you mentioned Jesus, Jesus is the image of the living God here on, here on earth. What are you, didn't Jesus say, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father? <laughs> if you have seen me, Jesus said, that means you have seen the Father. So how, how, how dare you to still call, uh, ask me, show us the Father? That's what Jesus said. So Jesus actually saying, I'm God. If you've seen me, you've seen God, the Father in heaven. You just got spanked, yeah, Muhammad, I mean, you got served for everybody to see. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. It, Jesus said from his own mouth, if you have seen me, you have already seen the Father. That actually proves that Jesus is God, right? Did your prophet make such a claim? Did Muhammad say, if you have seen me, Muhammad is saying, did he say it? If you have seen me, that means you, see, you have seen Allah? Did Muhammad dare to make such a comment? No. Only Jesus made such a comment. Huh? Donkey. You donkey, son of a donkey. And I'm not trying to insult any donkeys, by the way, any real donkeys, right? This reminds me of uh, Sheikh, uh, PhD Sheikh, Imam Ruhi. When I asked him and I debated him, guys, I've debated Sheikh Ruhi, Ruhi who is a PhD Sheikh from Al-Azhar University from Cairo, Egypt. And I mentioned to him that hadith where Muhammad is saying, if you raise your head before the Imam, Allah will change your head into a, the donkey. 
He said, no, no, brother. This is a metaphor, brother. Muhammad didn't actually mean to say that Allah will change the head of the Muslims into a real donkey head. No, no, he meant to say by the word donkey, he meant to say you are ignorant. So guys, this is why you have so many ignorant, I mean so many donkey, so many donkeys in the Arab world, in the Middle East. This is why, because they are all donkeys. Metaphor, brother. So if you go to the Middle East, you'll see a lot of donkeys walking around. Right? So when we say donkey, it's actually in the Arabic language, it's not an insult, it means ignorant, according to Sheikh Rohi, PhD Sheikh from Allah. Right? 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 So exactly Alpha Omega, as Alpha Omega is saying in the chat, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Exactly, amen to that, my friend. Jesus is the image of the invisible God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is why Jesus said, when you, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Actually, when you call yourself a Muslim, you are an insult to the image of the invisible God. You are insulting our holy God when you are a follower of Muhammad. And as we stated, guys, the majority of Muslims are dependent on the lies and taqiyya and deception of the Muslim scholars. You know, and those are the people who are keeping this man-made cult, this sex cult, this death cult, this hate cult called Islam alive in 2020 still, right? Yusuf al-Qaradawi, one of the Muslim Brotherhood leaders, he's also a sheikh and PhD sheikh from Al-Azhar, he said if the penalty is the, it is, if the final penalty for leaving Islam right did not exist which means death death is the punishment for apostasy leaving islam if it didn't exist today that means islam would have already ceased to exist by now islam would have died years and years and years ago if the death penalty for apostasy was not implemented by muhammad so actually scare tactics right the punishment of the grave. You know, Muslims are scared to death because of the punishment of the grave. They are scared to death to leave Islam. Maybe in their hearts they already left Islam, right? But they are scared that people will find out that they left Islam in their hearts. Because you know what will happen to them if they leave. I mean, if, it's, if you are in Saudi Arabia, if they found out you left Islam, they will chop off your head. They will throw you in jail. They will give you three days, right? They will give you three days to repent. You don't repent, you die, right? You don't repent, you die. So, did actually Muhammad, was he actually sent to every nation on this planet? That's the question. I had this question, guys. I asked this question to a Muslim uh, under a video somewhere on YouTube. I asked him, is Muhammad actually sent to every nation? And he said, yes, brother. I said, prove it. Right? Prove it. I didn't get any answer. But let me help you guys. Let me help you guys and show you that Muhammad actually is not sent for everyone. If we go to chapter of the Quran, Yunus, chapter 10, Surah Yunus, Ayah 47, it says, every nation has its messenger, right? So every nation, let's say America, let's say India, Indonesia, Thailand, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Syria, all of them got their own messenger. So wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Muslims, if we read this ayah, every nation had his messenger. That means if Muhammad is the messenger for the Arab nation, guys, if Muhammad was sent 
as the messenger for the Arab nation, that means he's only sent to, to the Arabs alone and only the Arabs. So Muslims from Indonesia, Muslims from Pakistan, Muslims from Malaysia, why do you follow a prophet that was never yours? Muhammad was only sent for the Arabs because his nation are Arabs. They speak the Arabic language. You Indonesian Muslims, you Malaysian Muslims, you Pakistanis, you are not Arabs. People from Turkey, you are not Arabs. You don't speak Arabic. You are not Arabs. You are not desert people, right? Arab means someone who is from the desert, right? A desert people. You are not an Arabi. You are not an Arab. So, why do you follow Muhammad? Because the ayah is clear. Every nation has its messenger. So, Muhammad was sent to Arabia. Moses was sent to the Israelites. Abraham was sent to his people, the Assyrians. Abraham was an Assyrian, so he spoke Aramaic. Moses was an Israelite. He spoke Hebrew. Right? Because the ayah is clear. Every nation has its messenger. So you Pakistanis, you Malaysian, you Indonesian Abduls, you son of Abduls, why do you follow Muhammad while Muhammad is not your real prophet? Um, Asadin uh, Uwaisi. Uh, uh, Muhammad is the prophet of the whole world, not just Arabs. Donkey, are you saying that Muhammad and his Allah are liars? The eye is in front of you, you are donkey ibn donkey. <laughs> Look at this smart Abdul, brother. Look at this smart Abdul. Look at this smart Abdul. The ayah is clear and is front of you. It says every nation has his messenger. So according to Allah, the Indians, the Indonesian people had their own messenger. People in Pakistan had their own nation in their own mother tongue. The Iranians had a prophet and own prophet in their mother tongue. And Muhammad went to the Arabs because he only knew and spoke Arabic. It doesn't say that RC Muhammad is for the whole world. You liar. Shame on you. Donkey. Donkey. So where is the prophet? Where is the prophet for the Pakistanis? This is a Pakistani flag, if I'm not mistaken. Where is the prophet of the Pakistanis? Where is the prophet of the Indonesian people? This is an Indonesian flag. Where is your prophet, man? Clearly, Muhammad is not your prophet. You Muslims, where is your prophet? Muslims of Asia, where is your prophet? Show me his name. Tell me. I mean, according to Islam, Allah sent 124,000 prophets. Right? 124,000 prophets. Give me the name of your prophets. This is a very humble and sincere question. Give me the names of your prophets. Give me their names. When are they born? Give me their birth city. Name them. Give me their names. I mean, this, this is a fair question, right? And if we go to chapter 16, guys, chapter 16, Surah An-Nahl, the chapter of the bees, Ayah 36, it says, Read with me, guys. Read with me. Focus. And verily, we have raised in every nation a messenger. Do you see it? So not only in one ayah. Many ayahs, actually, guys. In many ayahs of the Quran, over and over, Allah is clearly saying, we have sent for every nation a messenger. Do you see it? So Muhammad is only sent for the Arabs. Moses was sent... To the Israelites who spoke Hebrew. Abraham was an Assyrian, right? He went and was sent to the Assyrians, according to the Quran, right? 
So you Muslims, you are lying to our faces. You are lying when you say Muhammad was sent to the whole world, right? To make it even more worse, chapter 2, ayah 136, it says, Say we believe in Allah and that which has been sent down unto us and that which was sent down unto Ibrahim. Wait, Ibrahim, Abraham, Ibrahim guys, was an Assyrian. He went to his own people, the Assyrians who spoke Aramaic, to Ishmael, Ishaq, Yaqub. Yaqub was an Israelite. He was a Jew, right? He was an Israelite. Musa, Israelite. Do you see it? Yeah, chapter of the mer, the cow, yeah, al-Baqarah, mer. Someone is asking to show chapter 21, chapter 21, I 107. No problem, my friend. 107. Let's see what this, that ayah says. Your wish is my command, brother. And we have not sent thee except as a mercy unto the worlds. Wait, wait, wait. Brother, are you saying that we found a contradiction? <laughs> are you saying that we just found a contradiction? Huh? Is that what you're asking, guys, to show me a contradiction? Yes, Zepsa, that's my intention, brother. So we have a, a huge contradiction. On the other hand, every nation has its messenger. And suddenly, but wait, who is this talking about? Who is this talking about? Can you give me the name of this person? Who is this guy who is sent to the world? Who is it? Is it Musa? Is it Ibrahim? Is it Muhammad? Is it Isa? Who, who is this talking about? Show me his name. Can you, can you show me his name? Let me scroll a couple eyes back. I don't see the name of Muhammad. This is, on, this is an honest question. Show me the name of Muhammad here. I see Zakaria. I see Yahya. Where is the name of Muhammad? Do you see the name of Muhammad in this ayah? I don't see it. Brother, who is this ayah talking about? We have to go to the tafsir. Oh, tafsir, wait, tafsir, how many years and years and years after the death of Muhammad was the tafsir introduced? Ibn Kathir just died recently. Right? Ibn Kathir, for example, died recently. Brother? Al Qurtubi, same story. Al Jalalain, both the Jalalains died a couple hundred years ago. So are you putting your salvation on the line and the trust of your salvation in the hands of people who just died recently? Are they fallible or are they infallible? So we just found a huge contradiction. If you are going to say this is Muhammad, that means we have a contradiction because it says every nation has its own messenger. Thank you very much. Oh man. Oh man. A huge, huge contradiction. Thank you for that. All right. Here it says that this person, we have no idea who this is. We have to go to the tafsir to understand this is Muhammad. And I think there are some liars who are actually doing taqiyah. Let's see if Ahmad Ali doing taqiyah. This guy doesn't include it, the name of Muhammad. <laughs> Let me go to a guy who is doing a lot of poopoo. Maybe Maududi. He loves to add. No, this time he didn't do it. Let's see maybe other people. What about this guy? Itani Allah. What's this one? Who is the you? Who is you? Let's see. Let us let us continue, guys. Pictal? Nope. Pictal not telling us who this is. Maybe this guy. 
She ah, <laughs> this guy is doing his own bid'ah, adding words in the Quran of Allah. See, guys, you see the bid'ah, you see how they actually add their own words in the Quran of Allah. Aha, uh -huh, this guy is a liar. Do you see it, guys? This is why we always tell you, this guy, Mubarakapuri, whatever his name is. This guy doing taqiyya. Everything that you see between brackets, guys, these characters, right? If you see something between brackets, it's not in the Arabic. Right? Where does it say that this is Muhammad? You liars. Shame on you, man. Shame on you. What about Shakir? Ah, Shakir doesn't do taqiyya. You see it? So who is this person? Allah, Allah failed to tell us who this person is actually. And as we mentioned, this is a huge contradiction with other ayahs like this one. Every nation has its messenger. So how can you say, how can you claim to be God? Allah, Allah. Oh Allah, oh Allah. How can you claim to be God but contradict yourself saying that every nation has its own messenger. But in other ayah, right? In other ayah, you say... That there is a guy who is sent to be the mercy of the worlds. I mean, for all we know, this can be Jesus, right? Because we know that God the Father, his will was to send the Son to save the world. This, this can be about Jesus, right? This can be about Jesus. Muslims need to guess. They have to, you know, do lottery, you know, buy a ticket. You know, cling, 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 cling. Oh, I think this is, this is about Muhammad, brother. So, for all we know, this is about Jesus. Who knows, right? The ayah doesn't say that. The ayah doesn't say that. Do you have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? So, you Muslims, you are actually hypocrites when you say Muhammad is sent to all nations. It's a lie. Show me that from the Quran. Right? Show me that. Show me a clear ayah where it clearly says, You, Muhammad, have been sent to the whole world. You are actually cherry-picking what ayahs say and what ayahs do not say. Because are you saying that Allah lied when he said every nation has its messenger? Are you trying to tell us that Allah is, himself is a hypocrite? Once he says this, one month later he says something else. Is Allah actually a child in a candy store? You know, imagine, you know, Allah being a kid with his mommy in a candy store. Allah is saying to his mom, Mom, I want this sweet, delicious candy, Mom. So, Mama gives him the candy, right? Mama gives him the candy. She says to him, yeah, uh, Allah, you, you will send, for every nation, you will send a messenger. Couple moments ago, later, couple moments later, Allah changes his mind and says, No, no, we have sent you as a mercy to all mankind. Where does it say that you are a prophet? Where does it say Rasul? Where does it say in the Arabic messenger? Where does it say that? We have sent you, right? Illa rahmata, you are a mercy for mankind, lil alameen. That's what the ayah is saying. You are a mercy for the worlds, right? For the worlds. How many worlds? You tell me. Anyway, maybe one, two, many worlds. In Islam, you have many worlds. Alameen, worlds, brother? We, there's only one world. Well, in Islam, there are many worlds, brother. Don't you know? In Islam, you have many earths. Earth number one. I mean, if you have seen the Flash, right? DC Comics, the Flash. You have uh, multiple, uh, you know, you know, multiple earths, brother. So, you know, for Allah in Islam, there are many worlds, right? World number one, world number two, world number three. Yes, world. Wait, worlds. Yes, worlds, brother. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> worlds? Yeah, wait, worlds, brother. Brother. So who is the one who is a mercy for mankind? The ayah doesn't say that. Allah is the worst communicator ever. Muslims need to pick up 
their cherries, pick their cherries and say, this, this can be about Muhammad, brother. But the, uh, we know, we know, we know who the real mercy for mankind is Jesus, right? Can you prove to me that this is not about Jesus, Muslims? What's your name in sky? My name is, my name is, I don't know, I forgot my name, man. I forgot my own name, brother. Take a while to guess my name, what my name is on Skype. Now, guys, chapter 48, ayah 9. Chapter 48, ayah 9. Let me show you how Muhammad actually loved to be worshipped by Muslims. What, Rob, what did you say, Rob Christian? Muhammad, mayday, mayday. Muhammad loved to be worshipped like his own Allah. Right? لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So you have to believe in Allah. Right? Lahi. La. Right? You see the real name of Allah. There's nothing called Allah. It's La. Right? The La. Right? Back in the old days, El meant God. Right? Simply God. El. Right? El is God. Right? A modern meaning of El is The. So... The name of the Islamic God is the La nowadays. So the real name of Allah is La. I think we have a call. Let me try to call this Muslim back. <clears throat> we have a call. Uh, yeah, um, Soko Films, uh, if you want to call me, my friend, uh, you're very welcome. But let us first try to take a Muslim call. Call me back, my friend. I don't see, for some reason, I don't see the Muslim who called me. Can you try to call me again? Muhammad Amin, you called me. Call me back, Muhammad Amin. And brother, brother K from Soko Films, I would love to talk to you after that, if that's okay with you, my friend. Muhammad Amin, call me back, Muhammad Amin. I don't see, for some reason, I don't see missed call. I think this is the Muslim, let's see. Hello? Salam alaikum. Salam, salam. Salam al-Masih lak, welcome. Salam alaikum. Now, uh, you, you, don't have, uh, you don't have any evidence that the Prophet Muhammad was sent, was sent only to the Arabs, okay? All what, all what you have, you bring very... All what you have is that you bring verses that say that prophets have gone to their own people. Yes. Yes. Uh, chapter, this, this 10, chapter 10, I have 47. Can you read it for us? Yeah, yeah, yes, brother. Yeah, yes, brother. Yeah, okay, read Now I want, uh, read I want read to it. only to refute you. I want only to refute you from one hadith from the, uh, from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay? You want to refute, you want to refute your own Quran? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. No. One hadith from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, destroys your. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I disrespect you. Your ignorance and every <laughs> and every uh, and every misconception you throw yes. at Islam. Yes. Uh, hadith from Sahih Bukhari. Okay. Yeah. And I, if you are a man, I okay. want you okay. to, uh, to respond. Before you to me go there, before we go there, do you Muslims mm. not always say? Do you Muslims not always say? Every hadith mm. that contradict the Quran, we reject it, even if it's from Sahih al Bukhari. Is that what you Muslims? No, no. Say? I disagree. I disagree. Okay, I disagree. I disagree with Muslims that say this. We Muslims, we Muslims reject hadith, uh, reject hadith that uh, has uh, five steps that have. Um, if you uh, have a hadith, have, if you ha uh, Abdul, Abdul, have Abdul listen. If you have a hadith, even from Sahih Bukhari, that contradicts the Quran, what do you take, the Quran or Sahih Bukhari? No, no. Sahih, Sahih Bukhari is a fully authentic hadith. Fully authentic hadith. It's a, a fully authentic book. Okay, so if it contradicts the Quran, if you if you if it contradicts the Quran, will you still pick it over the nothing, Quran? Uh, no, nothing contradicts the, okay, the sure. Quran. Okay, okay. What is, this is only, what only is the hadith? What is the hadith? What is the hadith? This is only misconception from you. Misconception yeah, yeah, okay. of you. Okay, show me the hadith. Tell me what the hadith is. Okay, brother. Okay, brother. What is what is the hadith? Yeah, no, Sahih hadith. Bukhari, what? Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, uh, this hadith, uh, I have read it from Tafsir ibn Kasir, but Tafsir ibn Kasir um, quote, quote this from Sahih al-Bukhari. 
I I can give you the link. At, yeah, give me the, the hadith number. Give me the hadith. Chat. Give me the hadith okay, number. Okay. No, no, no. You you want oh, no? you want me to give you the link at your uh, live uh, at your live comment section? No, no. I don't click on links. Give me the the hadith number, my friend. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. I will say to the hadith. You write it at Google, and it will come to you from sunad okay. sunad okay? okay, okay. Give it. Give okay. the hadith number. Now, Al Bukhari recorded from. Uh, give me Ibn the hadith Abbas number. Give me. Give me the hadith number, please. Okay, okay. This hadith I read from Tafsir ibn Kathir. This is from Tafsir ibn Kathir book, and it's, it is mentioned as Sahih Bukhari. Okay, give me the hadith number. As okay, long as you are okay. saying, I will give concept. you the link. I will give you the link at your. Don't give me link. Don't give me. Don't life. give me link. I don't click on links. Give me the hadith number. Okay, okay, wait. I, okay, wait for me, and I will give you. The hadith, uh, it is Sahih, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, yeah. uh, 438. It is book 8, hadith 87. And uh, a volume 1, book 8, hadith 429. Okay, brother? Four, 438, you said? Is that the one? Yes, Sahih al-Bukhari, 438. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Okay, I hope this is the one. Now, let me read it to you. Okay. Now, Allah, Allah Messenger والسلام, said, I have been given five things which were not given to any amongst the prophets before me. These are one. One, Allah made me victorious by, by his fighting my enemies for a distance of one month's journey. The earth has been made for me and for my followers a place for, play, for praying and a thing to perform tayammum. Therefore, my followers can pray wherever the time of a prayer is due. Yeah. The, the booty has, has been made halal lawful for me and was not made for so any best. Every prophet was used to be sent to his nation mm -hmm. exclusively, but I have been sent to all mankind. Allahu Akbar. This Allah, is our refutation. Okay. You are this is my refutation. Okay. What does the, the Quran, what, okay, what does the Quran say? The Quran says that every prophet is sent to uh, Kafat al Nas. Okay. Kafat Kaf al Nas, to his own nation. Okay. But the Prophet Muhammad, no. Uh, Allah says Allah says that the Prophet Muhammad was sent to all mankind. And even the Quran says that. Where does it say that? Show me one ayah where that supports okay. what you say. Okay, 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 brother. Okay. 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 But, I want you, uh, but I want you to respond to this hadith because this destroys you. Yeah, yeah this destroys And I'm not, I'm not. Show me, not, show not, me the it. ayah from the Quran that supports this hadith, brother. Sahih al-Bukhari, you don't even have the real Sahih al-Bukhari, my friend. Do you have the original Sahih al-Bukhari? No, what, brother? <laughs> what, bro? This is from Sunnah Oh, this is from Sunnah, okay. Okay, Quran, Quran, chapter 7, verse number 158. Seven. Oh, man, I, uh, oh, man, this is... Uh, wait, wait, this 7 is, uh, and then which one, which ayah? Surah Al-A'raf. Yes. Quran, uh, chapter 7, verse number 158. Okay. I'm not here uh, to have a wrestling match with you. I am yeah. because you, uh, you Christians, are very misguided. You are very misguided. Yeah, and yeah. You throw problems yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. to make okay. Islam look evil. Okay. And by the way, I don't want uh, I don't want to talk about Christianity. Okay. Because if I talk uh, about Christianity, I know that you're yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Read, read the ayah. Quran chapter 7, 158. Oh man, I am sent unto you all as the messenger of Allah, to whom belongs the, dom the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Okay. There question, is no God question, wait, he. wait, wait. Question. To who is Allah, so, sorry, to who is Muhammad when he gave these ayahs? Question. When Muhammad gave these ayahs, to who did he give these ayahs? I don't, I don't understand you. Again, my question. When Muhammad, when Jibreel came to Muhammad, he gave them these ayahs to Muhammad. He, Jibreel says, oh Muhammad, this ayah I just came with uh, flying, flying. No, Allah. No. I came and flying no. and I, I say to you, this is from Allah, give it to your people. Listen, who are, listen, to who listen, did listen, my, no, no, no. Listen, my, I'm, 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 I'm asking a question. You didn't answer, understand okay, my question. 
Okay, okay when Muh you. okay when Muhammad delivered this ayah Habibi. to the people, to who did he give he the ayah? To who? Nation, to his nation. Who is okay, now? Who? Uh, who? To who? Listen, who? brother. Wait, 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 wait. To who? Yeah, Habibi, listen. I'm not your Habibi. Well, I'm not your right, Habibi. Listen. I'm not crying. To who? Okay. Repeat, please. No, no. I'm not your no, Habibi. No. The Quran, yeah. Quran. To who? To who did he give it? Brother. To his nation. His, his, who is, his, who nation. is his nation? Who is his nation? Yeah, Habibi, let me read. Uh, let me read. Let me say to you. You got spanked. You got served. Bye. To his nation, brother. So. Guys, I'm asking him the question. When Muhammad got this ayah from Jibreel, say, O oh man, I'm really the apostle of Allah to all you all. Who are the you all? He's talking, let's say, in Medina and Mecca, right? He's talking in Medina and Mecca. Who? You are the gentleman, right? He said to his nation. Who are his nation? The Arabs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, brother. You got served. You got busted. You just busted yourself. You just busted yourself. Brother, I'm going to spank you, inshallah. Who got spanked, brother? I mean, this is recorded. It's We are live. Right? When Muhammad gave the Quran, to who did he give it? To his nation. Who are his nation? The Arabs. Thank you. Brother, you got spanked, you got served, you just proved to everybody. Right? Because, you know, this this donkey, you heard him, right? I asked him clearly, when Sahih Hadith, even if it's from Sahih Al-Bukhari, when it contradicts the Quran, don't you Muslims always say, when a Hadith contradicts the Quran, it means that we reject that Hadith and we take the Quran over the Hadith? Don't you always say that, Muslims? Yes, that's what you say. You, so you just lied in front of everybody. You said no. Well, you just lied. The Quran is always number one for you, Muslims. Because you say that the hadith is from men, but the Quran is from Allah. Why are you lying? Psalm 23, I, I, if, you, if you're asking me that question, my answer is Muhammad. Muhammad is the one who is always writing the ayahs, right? I mean, we can prove it very easily. Go to chapter one, my friend. Who is saying, when, you, when we ask Muslims, when we ask, who is the one talking in the Quran? They say, it's Allah. Okay, are you saying that Allah is saying? Allah is saying, and I quote, all praise be to Allah. So is Allah saying, all praise to be Allah, Lord of the worlds? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Is Allah saying, Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah? Is Allah saying, you Allah alone we worship, and to you alone turn for help? Is Allah asking for guidance, Muslims? When Allah is saying, guide us, is Allah asking himself? Is Allah asking another Allah to guide him? Right? But if we go, and exactly, if we go to chapter 69, we can prove to you who actually the Quran is from. Chapter 69, Ayah 40, for example. What does it say there? This is indeed the word of the noble messenger. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The Quran is the word of the noble messenger? No, RC, it doesn't say that, RC. Where is Fifi when you need him? Oh, oh, oh. So the Quran is the word of the noble messenger. Who is this noble messenger? Muslims will say, this is Muhammad, brother. Uh, brother Kai, you can call me, my friend. You wanted to call me, call me, my friend. We have a brother from Soko Films, from Speaker's Corner, who wanted to call me. You know, actually, let me try to call you. No problem. Brother K. Hello? Hello? I'm not a brother. Oh, it's a I'm sister. A oh, sorry, sorry, K. Sorry, I didn't know. I thought you are a brother. Welcome. You're live on air, sister. How are you? 
Thank you very much. Um, I've been listening. I just yes. really wanted to uh, say hello and thank you for your work. And obviously now that people are um, stuck at home a little bit more, yeah, I really do appreciate <laughs> We all to have that to. problem at the moment, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the blessing of all of this is, I believe, that uh, people are looking at their own mortality and the need for salvation more because Amen. there's more and more thousands of people pass exactly. away. Exactly. Um, really, it begins to show people, I hope, especially Muslims, that, um, you know, I think of the Hadith that says that at the end they will ask for an intercessor, they will ask Moses, they will ask everybody, basically, and, uh, you know, and Muhammad will walk them across this imaginary bridge and some yeah. all of that stuff. You don't need any of that, and not you personally, but no Muslim listening needs any of that. You just need the one mediator between the father and man, yeah. and that's Jesus Christ. It's not Isa. Yeah. It's there not, is no um, Isa, yeah. yeah and Isa yeah. is actually, uh, Muhammad confused Isa, right? And when we ask Muslims, what is the name of Jesus in in uh, in the Quran? They say it's Isa, but wait, who is Isa? He's the nephew of Aaron, apparently. He's the, I don't know who he is. He's making birds. He's the brother of Jacob, the, the, accur the accursed brother of Jacob. Esau, that's oh, who he Esau. Is. Yes. Oh, I see. Oh, gosh. Then he's red and he's hairy and he's. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the one. Yeah. Yep. That's <laughs> the one. <laughs> the accursed uh, Esau. Like, exactly. Like, Muhammad confused like him. him. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, Muhammad confused his mother, right? Because if we go to the Quran, we see, right? We see that Mary is actually the sister of Aaron and Moses. So, Muhammad had no clue who Jesus was. He confused him with Esau, the brother of Jacob. He confused Mary with Miriam, the mother of Aaron and Moses. You know, it's, 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 yeah. it is what it is. It's just small details for somebody who couldn't read and write. Yeah. It's, it's only a minor, like a couple of thousand years in between them. So I'm sure nobody will notice. They didn't have the internet then. Yeah, actually, Muhammad, they... Muhammad could read and write very well, sister. Even in the Quran. If we go to the Quran, mm. let me show you. If we go to the Quran. Yeah, I heard that before. Yeah. I just wondered if he could. Why did he make so many obvious mistakes? Yeah. yeah. Just a second. Because <clears throat> the Quran, if we go to chapter 7, Ayah 157, can you see the screen, sister? Um, I can if I fiddle around a bit, maybe. Yeah. I'm scared I'm going to lose the... I can, oh, no. yeah, I can read it. Yeah, I can <laughs> read it, no problem. If we go to the Quran, it says in chapter 7, Surah Al-Araf, Ayah 157, it says, who follow the messenger. When we ask Muslim, who is this messenger? This is Muhammad, the Gentile uh -huh. prophet. The word in Arabic is al nabi al ummiya right? The uh -huh. Gentile prophet. Prophet. Why Gentile Prophet? Why are the Christians and the Jews? Why are we called Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book? Because we have the book of Allah, right? According to Islam. We have the Torah and we have the Injil. Why is Muhammad yes. called the Gentile Prophet? Because he didn't receive a book from his God yet. That's why. And he's not from the line of Israel either. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the word it's not is actually not does not mean, literally mean uh, an illiterate an illiterate in you know oh, go, spiritually it's spiritually mean, exactly illiterate. spiritually he have a revelation spiritually yeah, illiterate and the same word guys he is the word al ummi right in this chapter in this ayah chapter 7 ayah 157 it's singular right al ummi or al ummiya now if we go to chapter 2 to prove it to you all chapter 2 ayah 100 Sorry, chapter 2, Ayah 70, uh, 78, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go there. 78. The same word is al ummiyuna <laughs> When we ask the Muslims, who are those? They say, these are the Jews. Among them, the Jews, right? Among uh -huh. them, a group of Jews are spiritually dead. They are heathens. They think they know the book, which is the Torah, but they have no understanding it. They actually wish like that the they Pharisee. knew. So the word, like yeah, the, exactly. Waminum ummiyun, they are spiritually dead Jews, fake Jews. And the what, word what, is the same. Yeah. Is, it true, is there a hadith that says that when he was on his deathbed, 
Muhammad asked for a pen and a paper. Yes, Sahih al Bukhari. So, exactly. why, yeah, that's, no. so that makes sense. Why would he ask for it if he wasn't going to eat it? Yes. Like he wasn't going to feed it to the goat who ate the uh, breastfeeding yeah. versus. Yeah, exactly. He was going to write something down. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Something, let, yeah. yeah, Muhammad asked for pen and paper to write something down for them so they will not go astray, right? After his death. Or to choose the next um, leader. Maybe. Yeah, but you know, Omar, if, if you read the hadith, Omar prevented Muhammad from doing that, right? Here, yeah. here is the hadith. Let me show you, sister. Uh, show everybody who are listening and watching. This is the hadith, Sahih al Bukhari. Ibn Abbas said, When Allah's apostle was on his deathbed and there were some men in the house, he said, Come near, Muhammad is saying, Come near. I will write for you something after which you will not go astray. So this is Sahih al-Bukhari, right? Sahih al-Bukhari, where clearly Muhammad is asking for a pen and paper to write something for the, his Sahaba. So he's, he was actually not illiterate that he could not write and read. He is illiterate in the Quran because he is a Gentile, someone who did not receive the book of God yet. Hence, yeah. Ummi or Ummi Yun. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. No problem. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm going to carry on listening. No, thank you for your lovely call. Uh, I think you're always going on Speaker's Corner and Debate Muslims, right? Yeah. Can you, can you tell us something right. about it? Because, you know, when yeah, we debate sure. Muslims, we talk to, on, uh, to Muslims here on YouTube. They say you have to debate uh, Muslims on uh, speaker's corner face to face go there you are a coward you. show us your I face do. and <laughs> you know what rob they seem to be getting better and better at running I like know, there's a I've guy Samzi, yeah. who i think maybe reebok or nike should <laughs> give him a call because yeah. he's a really good like i've seen him yeah, and i'm not joking i've seen him on a ladder preaching and get down and run and then be up the ladder before anybody even sees yeah. that he's got like he's professional at he just pops up. And Professional runner, whole... right? R running harder or maybe outrun Usain Bolt himself. <laughs> well, I think if Usain Bolt could wear the dress and run at the same time, like maybe there could be a little face-off between them. But with regards to Speaker's Corner, I went there today um, mm. as because the government says that we can go out once per day for exercise. So I thought I would exercise my vocal cords yeah. and uh, preach some Jesus. And... It was heartbreaking. I was the only person there. Like there were people walking their dogs maybe or but there were no Muslims. So for yeah. me that I mean, I was called there by God and God didn't send me a memo saying, No, no, stay at home this week. So yeah. I don't know, maybe Mohammed's not as uh as yeah, as forceful as God. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think you know, that you're doing some really wonderful work. Thank and you, um, I'm going to send you a message afterwards because I just had a chat with Jay Smith. And um, I think that one one at a time, like there's billions, obviously, mm. of Muslims, but there are also billions of Christians. And I think that one at a time, we need to win these souls for the kingdom exactly. because exactly. I don't want to stand on Judgment Day and have to to answer to my God and say why I didn't try harder. Well, sister, you know, not everybody can be a, a teacher or debater, but, you know, what we always ask our uh, audience is at least, you know, uh, at least download our videos, spread them on social media. If you can save just one soul, according to the Bible, you know, according to the Bible, there are going to be a huge celebration yeah. in heaven, right? So help me to help you spread our videos, uh, share yes. share the truth with Muslims, show them the hadith, show them the Quran, what the Quran is saying, you know, because they've always made claims for the last 1400 years. And here, finally, we have people who are studying, finally, the Islamic books after the death, especially after the death of Ahmad Didad, who was lying oh, and deceiving oh. 35 years ago, right? Now, there's something especially, called internet. Yeah. We are coming for you. We are coming for your prophet and we will destroy the lives of your prophet. Yeah, because anybody who brings a false Christ, that Amen. includes Isa, a yeah. false gospel, even if they're an angel of light, like Lucifer, <laughs> yeah. they, they're cursed. So, yeah.
I'm, I'm fully in agreement with you and God bless you and thank you very thank much. Thank you for your amazing call, sister. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay healthy of this coronavirus, right? Okay. Cover your face, <laughs> wash your hands, yeah. etc. Exactly. But more than that, cast your anxieties onto him yeah. and fear not that which can destroy the body. Amen. Just Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. To prosper that. you and not to harm you. Amen. And Amen. that goes for all of us. Amen. Thank you all for right. your call. God bless you, God bless you sister. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. That was amazing. That was really a blessing. A really a blessing of a call. Do we have any Muslims? <laughs> Do we have any Muslims? <laughs> that was really uh, a nice uh, talk. Thank you, Kay. Make sure to always uh, call us back. Uh, Kay, maybe uh, Phil Herrera. Maybe you can ask her for her YouTube channel if she has a YouTube channel. I forgot to ask her. Sorry for that. Uh, if uh, if you can share her YouTube channel on YouTube of maybe I think she's she said she's from Soko Films. Maybe you can provide the link of Soko Films and people you can support and subscribe to that YouTube channel too. You have amazing brothers like uh, Bob the Builder uh, and other people there in that who are a team, you know, Soko Films, is, I think, is a team, right? And she's part of that team. So make sure to support Soko Films, guys. They are doing an amazing job on Speaker's Corner. All the warriors, subscribe to all of them. And I've seen, actually, lately, uh, there are some Christians who are <laughs> actually uh, sharing a huge list of Christian apologists, right? A huge list that they are spreading around. That's amazing, man. Sure, you know, provide that list. It's a really a damaging list, right? Those are the most wanted <laughs> Christian apologists that, that, that you have to go to, guys. There's a list that is being spread on YouTube under the comment section. And actually, that's, that's a, you know, that list is important, guys. Spread it around. You'll see a, a lots of names on that list that you should actually follow their YouTube channels, right? So thank you for that call. Let us continue <clears throat> our teaching. And you heard the Muslim gentleman, the caller before uh, our sister Kay who called. You know, we asked him, show me, right? Show me from the Quran where it say that. Show me from the Quran. And he gave me an ayah and that ayah turned out to be an ayah against him and his Prophet's claim in Sahih al-Bukhari. So when we always ask Muslims, when you have a hadith that is contradicting the Quran, which one do you take? The Quran or the hadith, even if it's from Sahih al-Bukhari? They say, we always take the Quran because the Quran is from Allah, hadith is from men. Much later, 200 plus years after the death of Muhammad, right? And you Muslims, you don't even have the original Sahih al-Bukhari. I know you don't have the original Quran, but you don't have the original Sahih al-Bukhari for sure. Uh, let me call Sister Vanessa. She called me. Vanessa, let me call you back, Sister. You called me before. Welcome. Hello, brother of the call now. Mm -hmm. I just uh, want to chip in quickly um, to contribute to what Sister K said. Mm -hmm. And the other um, uh, Islamists that called you before, yeah. I have two questions for the Islamists. When did the God of, of the Jews and just the Christians... A second, uh, sister, that just a second, because uh, my live stream is saying that oh, it's buffering. Are we, are we okay, guys? Can you hear us? Sorry, sister, just a moment. Yes. I okay. don't want to cut you off, but we need to make sure that everybody is hearing us still. Is yes. our sound okay? Give me a one, guys. Yes, this is dear sister Vanessa, live on air. She's, she just called me. But please tell me, tell us if the sound is loud and clear still. Give me a one, guys. Are we still be heard? Give me one in the chat, please. Because for some reason, you know, we are live, right? Uh, can you still hear us, guys? It's clear. Okay, go ahead, sister. They can hear you. Yes. I just wanted to ask the other guy that, one, when did Yahweh, yes. the God of the Jews and the Christians, change his name? Exactly. It's not recorded anywhere yeah. that he changed his name to Allah. Yes. And by the way, Allah was in existence 
probably even before um, what his name was born, Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, how come we only find Jewish names yes. in the Quran as prophets? Sister, I think even we are. Maria we are was yeah. there. Just a second, sister. For some reason, I'm not sure what's happening on YouTube. Our YouTube right. is going crazy at the moment. Maybe we yes. can. Uh, man, what's happening? Guys, are we still there? They are saying that YouTube is going off and on, off and on. Oh, and I think really? Satan, Satan does not us to, you know, does want, not what want us to, you know, destroy his man-made code. It seems today. Not sure. It oh says, no, but um, yeah, it's, this is more powerful. Yeah, this so is. So he has no chance. Yeah, let me let me refresh. Let's see what's going to. Just a second. Yes. So sorry for that. It's all right. Oh man. It's uh, it's here on my side. It says that the stream health is no good. Why is this happening today? Mm. Yeah, buffering. Yeah, they say it's buffering. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Can can I call you back in a moment, sister? Is that okay? All right. No okay. problem. No okay. problem. I'll be praying for you, brother. Thank you, sister. Bye bye. See you. Uh, guys, let me. You know, I have no idea why. Yeah, a lot of dra dropped frames here, it says. A lot of dropped frames. Why is YouTube, you know, YouTube, why are you doing this today? You know, our governments want us to stay at home, right? And now YouTube is not allowing us to stream. Why is that, man? Why, oh, why is this happening today? Now here it says it's no good. From my side, it's no good. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. But here it says that the stream health is really bad. Let me do a refresh again. Guys, give me one if you can hear me. Give me one if you can hear me so we can call our sister Vanessa back. Okay, I think it looks okay now. Okay, let me try to call our sister Vanessa back. Hmm. Even Skype is not working well. Hello? Hmm. Vanessa, maybe you can call me back if you are listening. Can you call me back? Sister, Vanessa, you can call me back, maybe? Mm. It is what it is, guys. Maybe she has issues, too. I don't know. I have no idea what's happening today, guys. I am not that uh, knowledge when it comes to technical stuff, you know. Uh, it's already a blessing that we can do a live stream, but here, for some reason, you know, it's not really very good as normally it is. Islamist peace, you liar! Your name is Taqiyya. Islam does not mean peace, you liar. Shame on you. You will get, keep getting azab from Allah. My friend, Allah doesn't exist. I'm not afraid of your moon idol, man. Uh, Sister Vanessa, let me try last time to call you. Maybe you can call me. No, it's not working. It says connecting. Nope, not working. Let me call this other gentleman back. Mm. Anyway.
Anyway, guys, uh, please call me back uh, if it's working on your side. Not sure what's happening today, guys. I was stuck here, chapter 48. Guys, I hope you're still with me. If it's still buffering, we will have to stop this live show today, guys. Give me one if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me, guys. Not working. Okay. I hope you still can hear me, guys. Uh, chapter 48. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَصِيلًا When we ask Muslims, is Muhammad your God? They say, no, Muhammad is not God. Well, the Quran says that you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. What did you say, Rob Christian? According to the ayah, all Muslims must believe in Muhammad and his Allah, right? In Allah and Muhammad. And because Muhammad is the last mentioned person, the Rasul, Rasulihi, according to Arabic grammar rules, in a sentence like this, all the words that come after are for the Rasul, right? Because he is the last person. So if we continue reading, it says, وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ you have to assist him in battle, right? Assistance, you have to help him. You have to honor or respect him, right? And you have to glorify who? Muhammad. Uh oh. So according to chapter 48, Surah Al Fatih, Ayah 9. You have to respect, you have to assist Muhammad in battle, and you have to glorify him every morning and evening, right? That you may have faith in Allah and his apostle, and that you may support him. Support who? Muhammad in battle. Support him, assist him in battle, and reform him. That means honor or respect him. And you have to glorify him every morning and evening who the rasul of allah so if we ask muslims what does tasbih what is subhan tasbih to sabihu it's glorification to glorify is it an act of worship yes it is an act of worship so you have to worship muhammad every morning and evening BAM! You Muslims are actually worshippers of Muhammad. Here Muhammad made himself equal with Allah. Right? You have to worship not only Allah, but you have to also worship the Rasul. Right? Chapter 48, Ayah 9. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. Take a snapshot, guys. So you have to glorify who? The Rasul, because he's the last mentioned person. I think in many languages, guys, in many languages, including the Arabic, when you have the last person mentioned, all the words that come after the last person go back to the last person and last person alone. Right? So, also according to Arabic grammar rules, if you go to the Middle East and you go to school, the teacher will tell you in a sentence, in an Arabic sentence like this, when you have a last person mentioned, all the verbs, verb number one, verb number two, verb number three, go back to the last person and the last person alone. So you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening as a Muslim. This is why we Christians in the Middle East Call you Muhammadans because you are worshippers of Muhammad. 
Bam! You mushrik, son of a mushrik. You associate your Prophet Muhammad with Allah. And the proof is in front of you. Guys, you need to share this. Share this on social media. Chapter 48, Ayah 9 destroys the claims of Muslims that you have to worship Allah and Allah alone. No, it's not enough to worship Allah and Islam. You have to glorify Muhammad, Tasbih, Subhan, to Sabbihu, the Rasul. Thank you very much. Case closed. It's game over. Take a beer for Muhammad. You see guys why we always tell you to call Muslims Muhammadans? Do you understand now why? Because you Muslims must glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Right? Do we have any Muslim guys? Do we have any Muslim? Let me try to call this gentleman back. Hello, Rob. Hey, my friend, how are you? Oh, that's bad. What happened? Let me call him again. Hey, my friend, I lost you. Welcome. You're like now. <laughs> Hello, Rob. Hey, how are you? Go can ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead, my friend. Okay. Um, What I want to talk about today, and first of all, greetings to you and everybody who's listening. God bless me. But uh, what I want to talk about. What I, what I want to talk about today, or oh my. Hello, you there, my friend? Oh, man. I lost the brother. I lost our brother. Satan doesn't want us to do this, guys, today. Sorry for that. Hello? Hey, my friend, Satan is really not helping us today. Yeah, yeah, it's messing up big time. Yeah, I um, know. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I was like, I was like, can you turn to Surah chapter two, verse one oh six? Chapter two, one oh six. Let me go there, my yes. friend. One oh six. Yes. Do you want me to read it for you? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. For any verse that we meet, that we abrogate. Or cause to be forgotten, we bring another which is better than it or similar to it. Do you not know <coughs> that Allah has power over all things? Okay. <coughs> what that verse just proved. But first, I need you to read another passage. I need you to read a hadith where um, Muhammad had forgot part of the Quran. And he heard a man in a mosque reciting some verses and it reminded him yeah. of what he forgot. Yeah. So can you pull that hadith up? Uh, I'm not sure if I can it find goes it immediately, but I, I, it goes I remember the hadith. I remember the hadith. <clears throat> okay, because I wanted the, the people to see it. But uh, anyway, yeah. if you read Surah 2106, yes. you know how Muslims say that Muhammad is the final messenger? Yeah. Ahead, okay, if in, in, in Surah 2 106, it says that that um if Allah causes Muhammad to forget any revelation, that he would uh replace it with something similar or better. Yes, that one. Yeah, I remember now, that hadith, yeah. Okay, when you read that hadith, <clears throat> it's really um damaging because in a hadith it says that. Muhammad was reminded of something that he forgot. So that means in order for the Quran to be true, that means that the man yeah. who reminded Muhammad, he brought him yes, I a think similar just, verse. Yeah, just, just let me put the hadith on okay, the screen. Okay. <laughs> I think I found it. Uh, here is the hadith. It's a good hadith. Whatever a verse or revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. 
That's the one. Do you have a hot? Do you have a hadith on the screen? Yes, the one I just about, read. Yeah. No, the, the hadith about Muhammad. He had forgot part of the Quran, and he heard a man in a mosque reciting it, and it reminded him. And he was like, "Um, the blessings of Allah be bestowed on this man. The mercy and blessings." I'm not sure if I can find it right now because you know at the moment we have major issues. And I read to pay attention to the live stream at the moment. But I, I remember right. the hadith that you're talking about. I remember. All right, but anyway, yeah. anyway, yeah, when anyway. you read when you read Surah 2106, it says that if Muhammad forgets a verse, Allah yeah. would replace it with something similar yes. or better. Yes. It didn't say the same. It says something similar or better. Yeah. Why so would you why would you send something and replace it with something similar? What's what's the point, right? Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make, yes. The man that Muhammad heard reciting the verse, two things, you got two problems with it. Mm -hmm. Now, either the man reminded uh Muhammad of something similar or better, mm -hmm. and that would mean since it wasn't the same thing he reminded Muhammad of since the verse 2106 said that if Muhammad forgets a verse that Allah was sending him something similar or better. Yes. So it, it creates a dilemma for the Muslims because the man who reminded Muhammad. Now, if he didn't send or, or remind Muhammad of something similar or better, it proves the Quran is wrong when it says that Allah will give Muhammad something similar or better. Yes. Okay? Now, if the man did give Muhammad something similar or better, that means he, the unnamed man that was in the mosque, is the final messenger of Islam. Exactly. Because he brought, some, he brought something new to Islam that Muhammad didn't have. Bam! So exactly. Say, That's a so good one. The so yep. if the Muslims say no, he didn't um bring something new. If you say that, that's the dilemma. Because if you say that, then you are proving that the Quran is wrong. Surah um two one oh six when it says that that Allah was sending him something similar or better. Exactly. So if you say a man just reminded him of the verse, you are proving the um Quran wrong. So either way they go and trying to deny it, it, either way it destroys Islam. Exactly. Exactly. So. So the only thing they can say is in order to keep the um the the Quran true, you have to say that the man who reminded Muhammad of the verse brought him something similar or better, which would actually be something new to Islam. Exactly. Something that Muhammad himself didn't even bring. Exactly. And another problem is um the Quran says that Allah would bring something similar or better. And the Hadith proves that Allah did not send something similar or better. It was the man who was reciting the Quran who reminded um Muhammad. Yeah. So that's that's three problems right there. Yeah. Um, that's three problems. Yeah, exactly, bro. And and our dear brother and admin Phil Herrera is asking in the live chat, what is the verse that is better than or similar to the adult breastfeeding or breast sucking verses Muslims. So <laughs> what is much better? Which ayah is better than the adult breastfeeding, adult suckling that Allah gave to abrogate it with? What is much better than that? Right. Maybe Muslims can tell right. us. Right. Right. So that that's that's that right there, it destroys Islam completely. They exactly. can no longer say they can no longer say that Muhammad is the final messenger. Yeah. So these Muslims, they need they need to be revering or yeah. finding out who that man was in the mosque. Yeah, because that's their final messenger. Yeah. Basically, in a nutshell, bro, what you're actually also try to say is if Muhammad was truly a prophet. Right. And he was right. not fabricating ayahs. Allah should have reminded him of the ayahs that he gave to his people. But Muhammad, because right he kept his he forgot his own ayahs right he forgot his own ayahs because he's a fake prophet of course he's going to forget it and people come to him and remind him what the ayahs that he gave to his people so these are nothing but excuses 
signs of a fake prophet who forgets what he is fabricating. That's it, basically. And, and, and you got ex and 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 ex, ex, I, I want to expound upon the fact that the problem is not only this is what people need to really get. Yeah. It's not just that he was reminded. The fact is the Quran says that Allah will bring something similar or better. So the man who reminded him, he yeah. couldn't remind him of the same thing or it would it would prove that the Quran is false. Yeah, exactly. You see? Yeah. So when, so even when Muhammad said he reminded me of something, that's Muhammad proving that this man reminded him of the same verse, but not something similar or better, like exactly. Allah said in the verse. So that destroys Islam, the Quran, and Muhammad. Exactly. exactly. So they have a new, they have a new final messenger. That man that was in the mosque who exactly. reminded Muhammad. That, exactly. Yeah, that, that's basically what I wanted to say, man. Yeah, man, you're 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 spot on, my friend. Exactly, exactly. And then not only that, my friend. Um, I mean, you have uh, Omar, who actually is a prophet in Islam. You have Waraka bin Nufl, who received uh, basically the command from Allah to write the Injil in the Arabic. You have many prophets in Islam, not only Muhammad, right? Right, because Rob, let me ask you something. Yeah. Because the verses that Surah 2, 106, that was Allah revealing something to Muhammad, correct? Yeah, exactly. So when he was... So when he was telling him that if you forget something that 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 he will replace it with something similar or better, he was talking directly to Muhammad, correct? Exactly, exactly. That's what Muslims. Okay, claim, I just yeah. wanted to make that. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's a done deal, then. Yeah, my friend. Exactly. Yeah. So. Do you do you want to hey, share you, anything hey. about about the coronavirus? Uh, well, maybe you can you know give people advice. You know. Who are, who, are uh, who are listening? Uh, well, the thing about the coronavirus is it's something that um, also proves Islam to be false because they believe it's a hadith that says that if a pandemic comes into your land, yeah. you're not supposed to leave the land. Yeah. You're supposed to stay there because mm -hmm. if something happens to you, it's by the will of Allah. So in other mm -hmm. words, they're not supposed to run or try to prevent the will of Allah, mm -hmm. but in mecca right now they have cleared it out so exactly. they don't even believe the garbage that they read because if they really believed it why would they be trying to purify the city sterilize the mosque area the al majid why yeah. would they be trying to do that if they believe that it's the will of allah and whoever gets it it's because of allah yeah and what and do you think bro and what do you think about where muhammad said where muhammad said you have to use black seeds, right? The black seeds, they are the cure for anything. For any, oh, right. any yeah, disease. Yeah. <laughs> a cure yeah, for every not... disease. Every disease. Right. You can use black seeds. But wait, if that's true, that means, you know, the coronavirus, right? It's basically the disease is like a flu, right? I mean, yeah, why, it yeah. Yeah, why, why the scientists are not taking the advice of the, the doctor of his time, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, why are they not using black seeds as a cure for you know this flu or exactly. let's say this coronavirus i mean imagine if you're a muslim and you show this hadith to any scientist who is working on a medicine what do you think the scientist will say are you point a is he going to take you seriously or point b is he going to drop on the floor and laughing his ass off what do you think and remember, um, Muhammad said, there's no such thing as transitive <laughs> diseases, no yeah. contagious diseases, exactly. but yet they taking precautionary measures in Mecca. Why would you take precautionary measures? And your prophet said there is no such thing yeah. as contagious diseases. That means you don't believe what he's saying. Yeah. And bro, you are reminding me of another hadith where Muhammad is saying the angels will protect Medina. Go to Medina and see how many people are suffering from the coronavirus. Where are the angels right. of Allah who are protecting Medina, bro, my friend? Are you saying hey, that bro, Muhammad died? Did Muhammad die? I got lie? a question about that. Yeah. You know the you know the passage of Hadith you just mentioned? Yeah. Now I have brought that up to a Muslim before, mm -hmm. and they say that, and I need you to help me out on this. They say that that Hadith 
is yeah. referring to when the Dajjal come. It's not talking about now. It's talking about the end time. Is that right. true? Where does it say that? What? That's what they say because I've brought that up before. Where they does say the that. Hadith say that? Where does the Hadith The Hadith say doesn't say it, but that's what they'll say. So they are actually adding, right? <laughs> right. That's what they say. Oh, man. Uh, you know, they come up with some crazy they have stuff. To, huh? They have to do damage control, right? Like, uh, you know, ask a Muslim <laughs> about this. They have to do damage control after the damage has done by Muhammad himself 1400 years ago, right? Only thing right. they can do is damage control. That's what they have to do. Right. So maybe we should actually contact the scientists and say, there's a guy called Muhammad who lived 1400 years ago. He claims that he found the solution, which is black seed, right? For the coronavirus, which is causing this flu, you know, this flu that is actually causing a lot of damage now in 2020. Why are they not listening to the Prophet of Islam, man? He was a genius. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Hey, Rob, you know that video you did about, um, you had the one you did about, uh, it was real good. It's like one of the best ones you had posted. It was like the Which one man? when you get it, get the Hadith busted about, um, no prophet had the same mother. Oh, that one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You you should do the one, you should make one for the um what I just pointed out about that Sura 2106. That's yeah. that yo, you should edit it and just bust them up with that shit, yeah, man. Sure, sure my oh, I don't, I don't mean to curse because I know that my bad. Yeah. But yeah, you should you should edit it and no problem. You know, like it's no way they can get around that. Yeah. Exactly. Because they either way they go, this will be the last thing I'll say. Either way they go, yeah. it proves Islam wrong. Because if they say that the man who reminded Muhammad didn't bring something new, it yeah. gets the Quran busted because Allah said he would bring something similar or better. And if the man brought something similar or better to stay in alignment with what the Quran says, that means he is the new final messenger, and that excludes Muhammad. Yeah. Exactly. So that's a new that's a new dilemma they have to deal with. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, yeah, there are that's... many damaging uh, topics that we can use as against this man-made cult of Muhammad, right? We know Muhammad yeah. wrote the Quran. We Muhammad was <clears throat> fabricating ayahs. And you know, to come up with the excuse, you know, uh, uh, I, I I can't remember the the ayah. Well, Allah caused me to forget it, and He will bring surely He will bring something similar. I mean, why would Allah cause you to forget an ayah and later bring you the similar ayah? What's the point, Allah? What is the point of bringing similar ayahs? Hey, what ayah? Well, and when you're going to abrogate something, well, ayahs like like the the two ayahs of adult breastfeeding and uh, stoning tooth, why would you abrogate it? Right? Why would you abrogate it? What's the reason for that? And where are the ayahs that abrogated those two ayahs? Can you show me the ayahs that abrogated them? Rob, I want to add something to the last thing you just said. You brought some back in my memory. Yeah. Now. If okay, you know how Muslims say that the Quran is eternal, right? Yes. The eternal words of Allah. Yeah. How can you replace the eternal words of Allah? If he can replace they say the um the, the Quran is uncreated, so that yeah. means it's eternal. How can Allah replace uncreated eternal words? That means if he can do that, yeah. that means he has two Qurans, yeah. one a backup Quran in case he causes Muhammad to forget some verses. Yeah. So that means they that there are two uncreated Qurans. Exactly. Exactly. That's you get what I'm point. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that, that means there are two uncreated Qurans. Because if he can replace something that's forgotten, okay, yeah. where's the forgotten verses located? That means also that um that Muha that Allah is shortchanging Muslims because he's holding back. Yeah. The second Quran, that's that's the backup to um this Quran that they have. Exactly, exactly. You that's see what I'm saying? So yeah. there, there are two uncreated Qurans. Exactly. Because how can you okay. how can you yeah how can you abrogate one ayah cause it to uh, to be forgotten and replace it by a similar one? Because that means actu actually that you have two similar books. You are replacing one with another, right? That makes sense. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 
And if it's the word, if you're replacing it, you are replacing with the word of Allah. And they say that the word of Allah is uncreated. Yeah. So he got a hidden, uncreated book somewhere. So that means also that Muhammad is not the final messenger because if there is a um a hidden book somewhere, it hasn't been brought out yet. Exactly. Yeah. There's two uncreated Qurans. Exactly. A backup Quran in case the verses are forgotten and the one that they have. Yeah. So that's another problem. That's another problem. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. Like it's so much ways to get them, man. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm gonna just sit back and listen, finish watching the show, and I'll be thinking, man. While you be speaking and stuff, like I was listening to Christian Prince last night. He got these people busted real good. Yeah. This dude who had called in. Yeah, Did man. you see? It? Yeah, man. This is the thing is it's amazing, you know. That let's say you know, uh, fourteen hundred years ago, you had illiterate people, sand people, right? People who were shepherds, right? They had camels, they had goats. But now, 1400 years later, 2000, the year 2020, how can you still follow a so-called illiterate prophet? And all the sources that we read, everything that we read is against any lo knowledge, any logical brains, thinking brains. How can you be a Muslim in 2020? That amazes me. How, 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 how can you call yourself a Muslim while you see so many damaging sources that we can use against your prophet, against your self-proclaimed prophet in the court of law? Right? I got another question, Rob. Go ahead, my friend. Is, do, they, do they consider the gospel and the Torah uncreated? Because isn't that also considered the word of Allah according to the Quran? Of course, it's Quran? uncreated, of course. All the words of Allah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if they are uncreated, then how can Muslims say it's been um, destroyed? How can um, they, uncre they say the it's lost? It's Allah. lost, right? That's what they say. It's corrupted. It's lost. Exactly. How can something that is uncreated be lost? And when you say yeah. it's corrupted or lost, are you saying that Allah, the owner, the one who brought these books, are you saying that this guy cannot protect his own uncreated words? Is that what the Muslims are trying to tell us? Wow! Are you serious? You are sending eternal books, right? Uncreated eternal books, Torah, Injil, and Quran. But you Muslims are calling Allah a puny, tiny God who cannot protect his words that he sent. I mean, if I'm the one sending, should I not be the one who is protecting the books? I claim to be God. God forbid, I'm not, you know, let's say I'm God. I'm sending words, but I cannot protect them. Well, I'm the one who's sending them. That doesn't make sense. Exactly. And on top of that. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, my friend. I hear you. They say that, uh, like, the verse 206 says that, all I was saying something similar or better. No. That means that he didn't give Muslims the best version of what they have today. Because if he can if he can make it better, that means the word that they have today is not Allah's best word. Exactly. Imagine a God that does not send his best word. This is a strange, not powerful Allah who First sending uh, ayahs, calling them uh, his own words, his uncreated book. Then he decides to send better ones. How can be the word of God have better words than other words, right? That doesn't make sense. This is a God. God should be perfect, right? He should not make mistakes. How can Allah send words, then replace them with better words? Any logical person who would accept this in his mind? That's that's really messed up, man. That's really messed up. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, it's crazy, man. Yeah. I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm, that's all I really had to say. I'm, Thank you, know, you for this call, my friend. God bless you. Stay safe. Uh, it's always a blessing to receive a call from you, my friend. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. And if you have a YouTube channel, uh, can we share it on uh, on our live chat? Do you have a YouTube channel, by the way? I 
never asked you uh, for a YouTube yeah, channel. Yes, yes, okay. I have a, a YouTube channel. Can you send it? Can you send it uh, f uh, as a link f through Skype, my friend, so I can share well, it? Well, I, I, I can't. Yeah, I can do it right now. Um, the name of my YouTube channel is The False Prophet. Okay, and The False Prophet, guys. It? Yeah, The False yeah. Prophet is our brother. How how are they going to recognize it? What how does your profile picture look like? Okay, it just has like a picture of. Okay, the best way um to find my channel is by um typing in typing in this head this this subject line right here. Sura forty one. 11 totally destroys islam if you type that in the search box it's yeah. to come up and my profile pic it's a picture of this muslim sitting beside this little girl it's basically a mockery of like muhammad marrying aisha that's my um all right my profile pic. but the, the, the name of my um channel is the false prophet perfect guys make sure to subscribe to our dear brother here his youtube channel Support every Christian apologist guys out there. And uh, my friend, thank you for your call. And God bless and stay safe. Stay healthy. Oh, my friend. You too. Have a good Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Let me try to call our dear sister, uh, Vanessa, because we lost the call last time. Let me try to call. We have many callers, guys. And YouTube is not really helping us today. Mm, not working. Okay, maybe now. Hello, Vanessa. Are you are you with me? Yes, hello. Hey, welcome back. I'm yeah, I lost you for some I'm reason with... last time. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, the last time that I called you, yeah. you were talking about um, that uh, the, um, Muhammad couldn't possibly be the last prophet because of all the other people that added. Uh, so the so-called Quran, yeah. and uh, the thought that came to my mind was the scriber, yeah. the scriber that was writing for him. And then he, yeah. he Tabarak Allah, yeah, Tabarak Allah, <laughs> Ahsan al Khaliqin. Blessed is the yeah. is is Allah, the best of all deceivers, right? Uh sorry, of exactly. all the <laughs> creators, of all the creators. Abu so the creator. yeah, this is this is Abdullah yeah. ibn Abi Sarh, who was used exactly. to be the scribe of Muhammad who wrote the yeah. Quran for him, you know, when the ayah came down, suddenly this guy, you know, he's celebrating, oh, Allah is great, right? Allahu Akbar. Then he says to Muhammad, Subhanallah, Tabarak Allah, Ahsan al Khaliqin. And Muhammad told him to, he told him to this his Sahabi, the scribe of him, write it down as you just said it, because that's how Jibreel brought it to me. Imagine. Yeah. And this scribe yeah. immediately knew, hey, if I can fabricate ayahs like you, Muhammad, that means I'm a prophet, and this guy left Islam. Exactly. Yeah, and they and they still have the courage to say, um, bring a, 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 any Quran that is that can be like it. Yeah. I mean, it's all cooked from <laughs> beginning to the end, and they yet still say, uh, if you can find anything that is like it. So, anyways, I was going to ask the first Islamist, the the, the Mohammedan mm. that called before, mm. um, trying to all his best to see to make people see that uh, Muhammad is sent uh, to all yeah. mankind. Did you see how he spanked so himself? Yeah. Muhammad? Did you see how he spanked himself with that eye? Yes, I did. Oh man, that yes, was, that was brutal. yes, I did. That was and brutal. Like the, yeah. except, and the question. Exactly, and the question that came to my mind yeah. was, who sent Muhammad to all mankind? Allah. Yeah, sister, the connection is not really good. Can you can you try when, can you try to do something with when did sister? Yang will change sister, sister to Allah. I can't I can't hear you very good. You sound like a robot at the moment. Can you try do something? Maybe fix it. Can you try again, sister? Hello? Can you? Yeah, try again, sister. Try again. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, should I call back? No, I, I okay. really... You, I was, I was yeah, wondering... this is better. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I was wondering yeah. who sent Allah, because he read, he read a passage yeah. that Muhammad was sent to all mankind, or the, 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 to the worlds. Yeah. So, who sent Allah? Uh, uh, Muhammad. Was it Allah or Yahweh? Yeah. And when Eva, yeah, when exactly. Yahweh changed his name. Yeah. When did, when did uh, yeah. Yahweh change his yeah. name to exactly. Allah? Guys, 
if you are listening carefully to our, our dear sister Vanessa is saying, if we go to the Old Testament, if we go to the Torah, Exodus 3.15, we see God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob calling himself Yahweh, right? Yahweh, Exodus 3.15. Suddenly, in, when Muhammad comes and says, you know, I am receiving divine revelation from Allah. When did this Yahweh, our holy living God, suddenly when, when he said in Exodus 3.15, I'm Yahweh, I will never change my name. This is my name forever and ever. Suddenly, 600 years after the coming of Jesus, Muhammad comes and says, our God in his name is Allah. Are you saying that this Allah is changing his mind like a kid in a candy store? His, exactly. You claim you claim that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Allah. But are you saying first time you call yourself Yahweh and suddenly you change your mind while you say this is my name forever and ever. Exactly. So suddenly exactly. you change your name to Allah? That doesn't make sense. I mean, can God say something and later change his mind? Can you dare That's to call God. yourself God? And call yourself Allah. You claim to be God, but change your name from the I am Yahweh, the I am, saying to Moses, This is my name forever. 600 years later, after the coming of Jesus, Muhammad comes and says, Allah, this is his name is Allah, brother. This does not make sense. Yeah. So it's a fraud. It's a fraud from the beginning to the end. And outcome. You look at all their deeds. You yeah. look at their Quran and their plagiarized yellow book. Yeah. How come all the names you find in it yeah. are always, as prophets, are always Jewish names? Yeah, exactly. Uh, their Allah, is their Allah so bankrupt? Yeah. That he only has to go for Jewish names. This is, this is a sign that they are trying to forcefully yeah. marry their cult yeah. with the Abrahamic religion. Exactly. Now, brother, you remember one of uh, the last um, clips you, I, I listened to, yeah. you recommended one Dan Gibson. Yes. I've been watching his clips. Dan Gibson. And yeah. it all comes clear to me yeah. that these children of Esau, yeah. they are, they, they, you know, they have many, uh, later they have many, many idols of their gods in, in, uh, in their Kaaba. Yes, I believe strongly now after following Dan Gibson's uh, tremendous works, you see, yeah. that uh, Allah was transported for, from Petra yes. to Mecca. Yes, and you can see these children of of of, of Esau; they are very strong-willed yes. everywhere they are. That, they and don't forget, Esau is the accursed one, right? Esau, the brother of Jacob, uh, of is accursed. Exactly. Guys, do you understand what accursed means? Can you explain you know, to our audience, Sister Vanessa? What does accursed mean? By God. It's cursed. God's uh, uh, curse is upon him. Exactly. And, and uh, uh, apparently on his, on, his, uh, uh, on his children, apparently. Yeah. Because, you know, if you read the Bible, yeah. I mean, Dan Gibson really did a good work. I would really encourage people to, to go and watch uh, the clips. Mm -hmm. If you read the Bible, you, you will see the children of Esau yeah. always, always, they always either antagonize the, 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 the Jews exactly. when uh, any time, uh, like the Babylonians, they came to attack them. They were the ones that helped the Babylonians. Yeah. You will see many curses on the, on the children of, uh, of Esau in the prophets. Yeah. So it means that uh, from what I learned from Dan Gibson, it, it shows that they transported yeah. their Allah, their idol, to Mecca. Exactly, and they did everything to make their Allah the yeah. chiefest of 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 the little idols there. Yeah, that is what I conclude. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, exactly. But but uh, they moved. Uh, what's his name? Mohammed moved from Petra. Yeah. Look, they 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 had his bath uh, house there in uh, Mecca before, right? Yeah. Now they just because they saw that there are many uh, uh, research being done, being do conducted on, on 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 Islam, on the Qibla, on everything. All of a sudden, they destroyed the house in Mecca that uh, Muhammad was born in. Yeah. You know why exactly. would they destroy it? 
Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. Where is, where is Allah in the Bible? Allah is not the God of the Christians. His name was Yahweh. When did he, when, when did he change his name? Yeah. Number two, how come all of a sudden, Muhammad is the only prophet? Yes. All the other prophets, that is Arab, you see, all the other prophets were Jews. Yes. It's a fraud. Yeah, it's... Thank you. Know, yeah, thank, thank you, sister. You, you're completely right. I mean, any logical person should think, can Allah claim to be God, but change his mind every second, every time, like a kid in a candy store? That doesn't make sense. Exactly. I mean, we are humans. Yes, humans can change their mind. But if we study Islam carefully, we can see that these are signs Signs in the mm. Quran that the writer of the Quran is nothing but a human. He is a human who is changing his mind. There is no Allah, it's Muhammad fabricating ayahs. Because you cannot convince anybody that Allah claimed to be God, but changed his mind in claiming that he's the same God of the Holy Bible, same God of Torah and Injil, right? But in, the, in Exodus, he calls himself Jehovah and says, this is my name forever. Is, Glory to this name. Exactly. To, uh, right? Yes. And suddenly, <laughs> in the Quran, his name turns out to be Allah. Doesn't make sense. Mm. This cannot be yeah. God. This is a human, right? This is a human talking. Thank mm. you, sister. Mm. Thank you for calling. Just trying to push. Thank you, brother. God, God bless, bless you. you. Stay safe, sister, in these days. Yeah. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 Thank you for calling. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Good job. Well... It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Yeah, I think uh, you guys, you got the YouTube channel of our dear brother who called before, Vanessa, right? You got the channel, right? So make sure to subscribe and support our brother. His name is The False Prophet. He sent me also the link, but I thought I saw that Phil Herrera already shared that YouTube channel. Okay, make sure to subscribe to Soko Films, guys. So support our dear sister Hatun and her lovely team, DCCR Ministries. There are many YouTube channels that you need to support and subscribe to. We have a huge army of Christian apologists in 2020. Thanks the Lord, right? We are not in the times where Ahmadi Dad, 35 years ago, was doing all kind of damage and deception Nobody could silence him at that moment. There was no internet. We had no access to the books because of the internet as we do now. But now, guys, we have the knowledge. We have the internet. Now we can use and turn the internet as the biggest weapon and enemy against this fake prophet, this man-made death cult, this hate and killing death cult of Islam, this sex cult called Islam. Let us continue guys, hopefully we will have some other callers. I had a conversation with a Muslim somewhere on the YouTube channel in the comment section guys, and I asked him the question, when you Muslims pray, right, because we all, er, earlier we mentioned chapter 48, ayah 9, when we showed you that Muslims must glorify Muhammad every morning and evening, which is an act of worship. So Muslims must worship Muhammad every morning and evening. On top of that, I asked them, when you pray, what do you say to your prophet in your prayers? They say, As-salamu alayka, ayyuha nabiyu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Right? Peace and Allah's mercy and blessing be upon you, O Prophet. So wait. I use I what you are doing. Imagine this is a Muslim, right? This is a Muslim. He's praying and he's saying to the Prophet, he's talking directly to Muhammad, the dead Prophet of Islam, who is lying and rotting dead in his grave somewhere in Medina. Why are you communicating directly to Muhammad while you are praying? Clearly, Muslims, you are not praying to Muhammad, right? You are not praying to a dead guy, right? When you say, peace be upon you, O Nabi, right? You see guys how they are actually praying to Muhammad? As-salamu alayka, ayyuhal nabiyu, wa rahmatullah, wa barakatuh. Peace be 
upon you, O Prophet. Up, upon who? You. So you are talking directly to Muhammad. Imagine this is Rob Christian, right? When you Muslims say, Assalamu alaika, O Rob Christian, so you are actually talking directly to me. So when you pray and you say to Muhammad, Assalamu alaika, peace be upon you, that means you are communicating with Muhammad when you pray. Why are you praying to a dead man, Muslims? Because you are worshipping him, right? You are worshipping Muhammad. Peace be upon you. You are communicating with Muhammad. You see guys how Muslims don't think? They don't think about this. When you are talking to a guy in your praying, you are praying. Why are you communicating with Muhammad? Why? Why are you not communicating with Isa? Right? Why are you not communicating with Moses? Why with Muhammad? Because Muhammad is the real God of Islam. This is why you Muslims communicate with Muhammad when you pray. Assalamu alaika, ayyuhan nabiyu. Right? On you, O Prophet communicating while praying directly with Muhammad. This is nothing but shirk, this is blasphemy. Because why are you not talking to Allah? Why are you talking to Muhammad? Shouldn't you not talk to Allah directly instead of Muhammad when you pray? Hmm? Muslim, think with me here. Guys, Muslims, we are not your enemy. We are trying to make you think, think Muslims, when you are praying and you are communicating with Muhammad, isn't that blasphemy? Are you not communicating with a dead guy who is now in Medina in his grave? Huh? And Muslims say, we are only worshippers of one God. Yeah, right. You are communicating with your prophet while you're praying. And you claim that you are practicing Tawheed? <laughs> right. Assalamu alaikum, ayyuhan nabi. Peace and blessings upon you, O Prophet. Alright. So, as you see, guys, they are directly communicating, talking to Muhammad when they are doing sujood, right? doing prostration, which is an act of worship. They are praying and they are talking to the Prophet Muhammad. That's shirk, that's blasphemy Muslims. Why are you not talking to Allah? Why are you talking to Muhammad? Right? Do you see it? Now Muslims claim Islam, you know, is the best religion. Islam is... The teaching of Muhammad is nothing but, you know, we do evolution, we clean ourselves. Muslims, when we ask you, when you have a lice in your hair, lice in your hair, you know, those small insects that can crawl up here in your hair, what is the sign of that, right? Those are signs of being someone who is very dirty. And you claim that your prophet taught you the best way to clean yourself. But your own prophet was very filthy, very dirty. Your prophet had lice in his hair. Let me show you. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 7001-7002, right? Let me scroll back. Allah's Messenger used to visit Um Haram. Bint Milha, let me make this smaller, guys, just a second. Right? When he visited such and such person, she was the wife of Ubadah, Bint as Samad. One day, the Prophet visited her and she provided him with food and started looking for lies in his head. The head of who? Of Muhammad. Wait, Muslims. You claim that Muhammad taught you how to clean yourself. Why didn't the Prophet of Islam follow his own advice? How dare you to claim that Muhammad is clean while he has lice in his head? Lice! Right? Clean 
is Muhammad was clean Muslims. He is the pattern of conduct to follow. <laughs> another hadith, another hadith from Sunan Abi Dawood, hadith number 3080, Sahih, Sahih hadith, right? Narrated Zainab, she was speaking lies from the head of the Messenger of Allah. Wait. You Muslims claim that your Prophet is the most clean person, the best guy to follow, the best example. But here the best example has a lies in his hair. And women were cleaning the head of the Prophet, the hair of the Prophet from lies. You see how dirty, how filthy Muhammad was, Muslims. You claim, you dare to claim that your prophet was the most clean person on earth? <laughs> go, go on YouTube guys, you will see tons and tons of videos from Muslims trying to show you how clean Muhammad was. Clean? Right? Muhammad was clean, but he had lice in his hair? Right. Not only that, not only that, Muhammad asked, you know, Muhammad was asked by people, by his people. The people asked the Messenger of Allah, this is Sahih Hadith by the way, the people asked the Messenger of Allah, can we perform ablution? Can we wash ourselves out of the well of Buddha, right? This is small well which is a well, right, water, small water, right, small well, into which menstrual clothes, menstrual blood of women, right, women who menstruate, who are washing their clothes in, in that water, it has dead dogs, guys, dead dogs, as you see on the picture, as an example, dead dogs, and stinking things, garbage, were thrown in them, in the water, Muhammad, look at the medical doctor Muhammad of his time. Muhammad replies, he replied, the messenger of Allah replied, water is pure, the water of Buddha is pure and is not defiled by dead dogs, by blood of women who menstruate and the garbage that is thrown into it. It's a small well, brother. Certainly carcasses of dead animals, dead dogs. And we know dogs, guys, dogs in Islam are basically the devil, right? Especially the black dogs. Muhammad said, nothing can make this water impure. Water, the water of Buddha is pure. Yes, it has dead dogs. Yes, it has menstrual blood. Yes, it has garbage in it, but it's not defiled by anything. This is Sahih Hadith, Sunan Abi Dawood, Hadith number 66. Try, guys, take this prophet seriously in 2020. Muslims, Muslims, really? This is a prophet of God? This is a prophet of God who tells you that nothing can make a small will impure, can defile this water, and you can put that water in your mouth because when you do ablution, you wash, you know, a, a big part of your of your body, right? You put water in your nose, in your mouth. Imagine, guys, if you if you would do that. Now, thank you for the donations, guys. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you for your support through donations. So, as you see, guys, you cannot tell me that you are actually respecting your brains and uh, call yourself a follower of Muhammad, a Muhammadan, a Muslim in 2020. You cannot convince anyone that you are a smart person and believe that nothing can make water impure, even if it has dead blood in it, dead dogs in it, menstrual blood in it. Stinking garbage, garbage man, stinking things, garbage in it. Look at the wisdom of the Prophet of Islam. Right? Muslims, really? Really? I mean, for real? No man.
I think the, the stream is good now, right guys? The stream is better than the before. I think it was, uh, you know, because a lot of people are on YouTube, maybe the servers of YouTube cannot handle so many people, you know, a lot of people are sitting at home and, you know, the stream can, you know, be not stable so now and then. So you have to, you know, this is a live show, guys. We have to cope up with it. But it seems that it's good now. So thanks the Lord. Do we have any calls, guys? Do we have any other calls that we can uh, take? Are there callers who wants to call us? Do we have any other callers? <clears throat> Muslims, really? A prophet who has lies in his hair and telling you how to clean yourself, but he cannot even clean himself. I mean, really? Lies in the hair of the Prophet of Islam? Muslims. And you dare to claim that Muhammad was the most clean person on earth? <laughs> really, Muslim. And his wife Zainab was picking lies from his head. This is, by the way, the same daughter-of-law of Muhammad, right? His own daughter that he stole from his son Zayd ibn Muhammad, right? He adopted Zayd and Zayd became the son of Muhammad. Zayd ibn Muhammad and later Muhammad falls in love with Zainab. Subhan muqallib al qulub Muhammad said when he went to see his son, his son was not at home and he entered the house and he saw Zainab naked body and he said glory to Allah who turns heart and he was blaming Allah for falling in love with his own basically his own daughter Zainab bint Jash. Zainab this is the same Zainab his own daughter-in-law that he later had sex with and this is the one this is his new wife right this is the wife of Muhammad who is basically his own daughter who he had sex with, who is picking lies from his hair, right? This is the most clean prophet of Allah. SubhanAllah for this clean prophet of Islam. SubhanAllah. Very clean prophet, brother. Lies in the hair of the prophet of Islam, brother. We show you the Sahih Hadith, right? This is a Sahih Hadith. Sahih Hadith, sahih hadith right? It's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. It's mentioned in Sunnah Nabi Daud. And many, many other scholars are actually reporting this. Many. Very, very authentic. Right? Disgusting prophet of Islam. Clearly, clearly when you have lice in your hair, you must be very clean. Right, Muslim? Right? Yeah, the prophet would lies and lies. That's a good one, cruiser, cruise eighter. Or sorry if I'm butchering him, cruise eight R. Yes, that's a good one. The prophet with lies and lies. <laughs> the most clean prophet in the history of all prophets, brother. Do you have any uh, callers, guys? Do you have Muslims? Guys, let me grab some water. Give me a couple seconds. I'm out of order and we will continue from there. Be right back. Yes, hello. I'm I'm back. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Um, hello. 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 Muhammad Amin, you are um, here, right? I... Yes, yes. Well, why when I called you, you close at me and looked? Because you why lied. You lied and you got spanked and served. 
That's I. <laughs> we don't run away. You know, I just don't like to spank the away. same guy over. I, you got spanked. I, I, it's I recorded. Really it's recorded. It's recorded. Habibi, Habibi, I don't, was really listen, listen. Person, I'm not know. your. I'm not your. According to Islam, I'm not your Habibi. Are you calling someone who is a mushrik Habibi now? Is that permissible in Islam? No, no, no. Why are you so please, to to please Why don't. Are you running? I'm not running. I'm here. We are live. Don't call me Habibi because. <laughs> Because yeah, you're now going I against will, now we, against the teacher. Don't call me Habibi. Don't call me now Habibi. Now not respond to the hadith I brought and you run away like a no, 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 Now no, you no, ask no, me. No, 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 you ask, no, 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 You, ask you me. got spanked. You said it's it's recorded, and and it's over for you, my friend. It's over. Yes, yes, it is recorded. It's recorded. It's recorded. People can go and watch it. It's recorded. You got spanked hard. You you gave me the ayah okay, and and you spanked yourself. And you spanked your own prophet with it me again. because okay, you show you show you showed everybody you showed everybody how the hadith contradicts the Quran. Okay, okay, I have a question. Okay. I, have, I, have, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, I have a Wait, question for okay. you. Okay. Uh, okay, can you tell me? You went to school, right? Did you go to school? Yes. Okay. Did it, your it, teacher? It, uh, it did Does your teacher? Wait, I, I, I'm, I'm asking you a question about the Quran, right? When you, when you, when you went to school, did your teacher, the, your biology teacher, did he t teach you how bees produce honey? Why do you go off topic? I'm not. I'm not going off topic because this is Quran. We're going to I show know, you I an know, ayah. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me how? Wait, wait. Can you tell me? Let me speak, man. Can you tell me how bees produce honey? Go ahead. Just do. Okay, and now, no, no. Okay, okay tell, now let's tell me, talk. tell me how bees produce okay, let's honey. Forget, let's forget about uh, Prophet Muhammad being sent to the Arabs. We already spent you. We already you spent you about it. Move on. We can move. No, no, let's no, no, no. About it's life. over. Let's it's over. Let's talk can about you? Life. Can you? Can you tell let's me how life. honey no. is produced okay, according to the to the Quran? Go ahead. Now I, I want to ask you a question. I want to no, ask. And I'm I, asking you a question. question. You are my guest. You're going to answer my question, or there's no room for us to continue. Can you tell me how, according to your prophet, you from me? how you're going to your Allah? What, 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 what according to your prophet? Allah, how is honey what is produced? Your life? What is, according what is to your prophet and Allah, show me. What does the Quran say about it? You went to what school. What is the topic of your life? Answer my question. Answer my question. Answer my question. According to your what prophet and Allah, how do and Nahl, right? The bees and Nahl, how do they produce honey? Go ahead. What is the topic of your life? Tell me. Go ahead. Answer my question. According what to your Allah. Why are you a coward? Why are you why are you a coward like Jesus? Okay, listen, 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 coward. Chapter 16, Ayah 69. Can you read what it? It's on the screen. Life? It's on the screen. Read it. There is no screen in front of me. Yes, there is. Chapter 16, Ayah 69. Let's, let's talk about read it. Let's, let's talk read about it. No, no. Let's talk we, will, about we will talk Tell about Christ. Not, Answer my question. Life, don't don't change topic. Abdul, you had the audacity, right? You have you think you have the courage to call me again after we spanked you and, and, and showed everybody what kind of liar you are. If you have the Why? audacity to call you, me for a second time yeah, like now, you are going to calm down, calm down. answer my calm question. Calm down, calm down, okay. calm down, calm down, calm down. I'm very calm. I'm very calm. Can you give me two minutes? Chapter Can you give 16, me two minutes? I 69. Answer. Can you give me two minutes? Can you get, okay, two minutes, uh, two minutes, two minutes, please. Two minutes, two minutes. Okay, okay. answer my question. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, okay. Now, this is your topic, the topic of your life was about the, the topic. My topic, is, my topic of today is the Quran. And your prophet, your prophet says something in the Quran. No, you claim no, this is Allah. Yeah, what, wait, Can Allah wait, make wait, mistakes? Wait, man, man. I will not interrupt. Uh, I will not interrupt. Answer my minutes, question. Answer my question. My question is: Can you tell me if Allah is correct about how honey is being produced according to Him? Go ahead. Okay, okay. I promise you. I promise you. It's in front okay, of you. Okay, brother. I you. Read it. Okay, I promise you that you will have a debate. We will have a debate about science. We are debating. About Go science ahead. in the Quran. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Any day. Read but it. now let's keep in the top. Read it. Let's read it. Well, You're well, going to read well, it. Go ahead. Give me two minutes. Give me two. Okay, can you please give me two minutes? I promise you. I promise you. Allah al-Azim. What, what do you have want to do? What? No. Go ahead. 
We have a topic right here, right now. Go ahead, read it. Why are you running? Can you let me talk? Okay, explain. We are running. You, the first time you ran away from me. You got spanked. Nobody is running, my friend. You got spanked and served. This is Tell why I hang up on you. If you, if you told me how to smack you, I will, I will, I will convert to Christianity. If you told me how did you smack I'm, I'm, I'm not only spanking you. I'm, spunk, I'm spanking your prophet and Allah who is lying in the Quran. Chapter 16, okay, yes. ayah 69. Read it. Why? Let us this see is, if we can spank Allah. Nothing. Let us see if we can spank this your prophet and nothing, Allah. This have nothing to do with... Read it. This have nothing... To Read it. Don't be a coward. Nothing in my screen. There's a lot of on your screen. Chapter nothing 16, in my screen. 69. What, what, nothing in my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the screen. Do you want me to read it? I'll read it for you. Then Allah is no. saying, then eat of all fruits. This is chapter 16. You can open your Quran. You have a Quran at your home. Then, then, then eat of what all is the fruits. Of life? What is the topic of life? L let me read it. Broke, broke, broke. Coward, yeah, coward. Let me read it. Uh, okay. Let me read this it. This is a challenge. This is a challenge. No, no. This, this is, is a challenge. challenge. The yeah, challenge is we're going to spank you, Allah. Do, can we spank you, Allah? That's the challenge. Don't waste my time, Abdul. Please. Then eat of all bro, bro, fruits. Bro, bro. <laughs> motor, motor mouth. Sit down. You have no. You have the audacity to call me back, right? You think you can call me back after you got spanked and served for everybody to see. It's recorded. And you're going to tell me what to do? You have the audacity to call me back after you got manhandled by the truth. We used the Quran against you and your prophet in a court of law. Showed you how Muhammad in the hadith is contradicted his Quran. And you clearly said it. Yes. Muhammad is sent to his nation and his nation alone. But in the hadith, we see that Muhammad is contradicting the Quran of his Allah, right? It's recorded. Go play it back, guys. It's recorded, right? Go play it back and you'll see how this guy spanked his prophet, showed everybody that his prophet was contradicted. Allah in the Quran, right? Anyway, this is the ayah that this coward, if you are not a coward, call me back and we will discuss this ayah, okay? Call me back and we will discuss this ayah, right? You have the audacity to call me back. You are going to listen to what I have to say. After get spanked, right? Deal with it. Chapter 16, guys. Chapter 16, ayah 69. Muhammad, Allah saying the following. We know it's Muhammad, there's nothing called Allah, but you know, guys, no problem. Then eat of all fruits and follow the routes that your Lord made easy for you. There, Allah is saying, comes forth from their bellies, who are bellies of who? Of the bees, right? This is talking about bees. There comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying colors in which there is a cure for man. Now, when we ask Muslims, what is this drink? Right? When we go to the tafsir, what is this drink? Let us go to the tafsir, guys. Let us go to the tafsir. This is commentaries, as you see. Tafsir by Ibn Kathir. Right? Chapter 16. Not my tafsir, your tafsir, Muslims. Ayah 68, 69, right? Let me go there. We scroll down, you see, Ibn Kathir, 68, 69, chapter 16, 68, 69. Ibn Kathir, one of the tafsir that is, one of the tafsir that is in Islam. We scroll down and we'll see what this is talking about. We scroll down because, you know, a lot of blah, blah, blah. Here, this is the most important part, right? There comes forth from their bellies, do you see it, guys? A drink of varying colors. A drink of varying colors. Wherein is healing for men. So this is a drink for men, do you see it? A drink for men. A drink for men. Meaning, and this is the tafsir by Ibn Kathir, meaning honey. What? It's honey. Ha what? Honey. Again, honey. So 
This is honey. It is a drink for man, right? And this drink is honey. Question. Question, Muslims. Question, Muslims. Is it true? Is it scientifically true that honey comes forth, come out of the bellies of bees? Is it true? No, it's false. Guys, honey does not come out of the bellies of bees. Bees, they go from flower to flower. They collect nectar. Nectar, they mix with the enzyme in the body of bees, right? Enzyme. So you have nectar and enzyme, and this become a mixture. This mixture... They keep mixing it, vomiting in, inside each other's mouths. A worker bee vomit this mixture in other worker bees' mouth. They keep mixing, mixing, mixing. Then they go to the honeycombs, right? Honeycombs. Let me try to show you what I'm trying to say. Just a moment, guys, okay? Bear with me. So we have the bees. And they go after they collected and mixed the nectar that they collected. They throw it, the final product, they throw it here. This mixture, they throw it here. And they start to dehydrate with their wings. They have wings, right? Dehydrate the mixture from 70% to 20%. And much later, outside... In the combs, in the honey combs, these mixtures become honey. So the Quran, the writer of the Quran lied because honey, we showed you this is honey, comes not out of the bellies of bees, right? Honey does not come out of the honey as honey from their bellies. Only nectar and enzyme. Do you see how Allah lied? Do you see how Allah lied in the Quran? Do you see it? Right? This is a drink for men. And it come out of their bellies. What is this drink? It's honey. We showed you the, the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Meaning honey. Do you see it? It's a drink. Which can have many colors. Dark colors. Light colors. Right? Depends on what kind of nectar you collect. But it's honey. But wait. As we just explained to you, honey does not come out of the bellies of bees. This is a lie. Allah is not all-knowing. Allah is not all-knowing. He certainly has no idea. Allah has no idea how honey is being made. Certainly honey does not come out of the bellies of bees as a drink. Right? You Muslims dare to claim that Allah is God? Are you saying that Allah is not all-knowing? Or is this simply a book written by a man like Muhammad? This cannot be God Muslims. Because God cannot make mistakes. Just one mistake like this one crumbles whole Islam. And shows that Islam is a man-made religion. And you dare to claim that the Quran is a scientifically perfect book? Yeah, suddenly St. Olera, do you see? Suddenly, according to the Quran, bees poop honey. They vomit honey, brother. Right? They vomit honey. They don't vomit nectar and enzyme. Inside you comes and much later it becomes honey. No, according to the Quran, this is a drink for mankind, right? A cure for men that is coming out of the belly. They vomit or poop honey, brother. Those are very strange Islamic bees. This is a different kind of bees, brother. In Saudi Arabia, you have different kind of bee bees. The bees in Saudi Arabia and Mecca, they poop or vomit honey. They poop honey. In the rest of the world, bees, honey bees, they collect nectar. They mix the nectar with the enzyme in their stomach. They drop this mixture inside the honeycombs. 
Then much later after dehydration from 70% to 20% it becomes honey. But the Muslim bees are a different story brother. Right? Muslim bees are very, very strange, very specific, very special bees brother. Only the Muslim bees in Mecca they poop out honey. Mashallah. Yeah, Islamic bees, mashallah. Guys, have you any idea where Muhammad stole this idea from? Do you have any idea where Muhammad stole this idea from? He stole it from other people before him. Who? Let me show you who. Muhammad simply stole this idea, guys. There was a scientist in the name of Hippocrates. He lived a thousand years before Muhammad, before Islam. This guy lived 2,500 years ago from now. He lived 2,500 years ago. And Muhammad simply plagiarized, he stole the work of Hippocrates and called it the Quran of Allah. But Hippocrates, he was wrong because Hippocrates thought this Greek scientist, I mean, this is 2,500 years ago, right? He thought that bees make honey in their bellies which is a lie. So Muhammad, you need to, to understand that Muhammad was working for Khadija, right? And he was a merchant and he had access to many books. And the book of Hippocrates, right? His book was translated from Greek to Aramaic. And we know that Waraka ibn Nawfal, right? Waraka ibn Nawfal and Zayd ibn Thabit, people like Zayd ibn Thabit, Waraka ibn Nawfal, they could write and read Aramaic and they were translating the books of Hippocrates, the Injil, the Torah, many books to Muhammad and this is how Muhammad stole and plagiarized this idea from this Hippocrates, very famous Greek scientist but he was wrong, Hippocrates was wrong. So do you see? Do you see the connection guys? Do you see the connection? Muhammad took it, copy paste in the Quran and called it Quran. Plagiarizing works of men like you and me. Devil chaser saying, why he always copy paste? Well, you tell me. This is the prophet of Islam, mashallah. And he was wrong. Hippocrates is wrong. The Quran is wrong because bees do not have honey in their bellies in their abdomen right and we showed you that this drink is honey because it's a cure for men do you see it it's honey you don't need any tafsir to understand that this drink that comes from bees is honey because it's a drink for men do you see it you see what kind of liar muhammad was he's nothing but a plagiarizer of works before him. Do we have any Muslim? This is why this guy did not dare to answer my question, right? This Muslim, he didn't dare to answer my question. Yeah, Muhammad Amin, why are you such a coward? Because you knew what will happen, right? You knew how, how, I, was, how, how I was going to spank you and spank your prophet, showing everybody that your prophet is nothing but a liar. And the Quran is nothing but a book of a liar. This is not from God, people. Wake up, Muslims. This cannot be a book from God. Because God cannot make such disastrous mistakes. You see how Muslims 2000, in the year 2020 actually do not study the Quran. They do not study that bees have no honey in their bellies. Do you see it? Muslims don't read the Quran. They recite, they memorize, but they don't read and understand. And the proof is in front of you. Yeah, if Hippocrates <laughs> was right, then must, he must be the prophet of Islam, right? If Hippocrates was right, then he's a better prophet than Muhammad because Muhammad stole his idea. Right? You're, you're correct, Peter. If Muhammad is a prophet, then Hippocrates is a better, better prophet than Muhammad, right? Hippocrates is a better prophet than Muhammad. Do you have any color? Do you have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge 
Not a coward like Muhammad Amin who does not want to answer my question. You have the audacity to call me back Muhammad Amin, right? You have to deal with my question, right? You, the first time, it's recorded, the first time when you called me, we asked you the question and you gave us a hadith that clearly shows that Muhammad is against his own Quran. Muhammad in, this, in Sahih al-Bukhari contradicting the Quran of Allah. When we ask Muslims, when a hadith, even if it's from Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, if a Sahih al-Bukhari hadith contradicts the Quran of Allah, which one do you take, the Quran or Bukhari hadith? Muslims will say, the Quran of Allah, of course. Right? This guy did poo poo. He used taqiyya, as you heard. Go and watch it back and see how he spanked Allah and his Prophet. He knew. He knew why I, I asked this question about the bees. Because he knew. He, I, I'm sure he watched my video before. Right? We showed you this video before. We made a video about this very topic. How Allah is wrong about the peace. But we know it's Muhammad. There is nothing called Allah. We know it's Muhammad stealing stories from people before him. Like Hippocrates. And put it in the Quran. This is copy paste from Muhammad. Right? The books of Hippocrates used to circle around whole the Mediterranean Sea. Right? His books were famous. Right? Famous. Very famous scientist of his time. His book, before they found out that these, he was wrong, his books used to be taught in medical schools. The same Hippocrates, right? But they didn't know at that time that bees have no honey in their bellies. They thought he was correct. This is why Muhammad stole his work, right? But he, Muhammad, didn't know that Hippocrates was wrong all this time. Alright. Yes, me, it means that Allah learned from Hippocrates. Exactly, Peter M. Exactly. Exactly. Allah learned from Hippocrates. But oh boy, oh boy, Allah is wrong. Because Hippocrates is wrong. Guys, I think we had a... Good live show today with a lot of hiccups, you know, in the beginning. Uh, YouTube was acting up, but now it seems very good. I think we are out of colors. Thanks to the Lord, it turned out to be a great live show. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings. Even when we had Satan coming in between, trying to take us down, we continued and we managed to keep up a good life show. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Muslims, you need to wake up. You really need to wake up. It's 2020. No one, no logical thinking person should accept this false man-made religion. Please drop Muhammad. Denounce Muhammad. And come back home to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come back home, Muslims. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Including your knees, Muslims. It's still not too late. Come back home. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support and donations. God bless your families. Stay safe. Listen to what the governments have to say, guys. Right? Keep your family, keep your loved ones safe. In these difficult times don't lose hope keep the faith in Jesus Christ we need him keep all of us in your prayers also pray for even the sick Muslims if you hear about Muslims who become sick pray for them to be saved and maybe maybe if they are watching our videos they will accept the truth and leave Islam and come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you. God bless your families. Lord willing, we will see each other again.
in an amazing live show. God bless. Partially converted next. Quran is the word and control from the bellies of bees. Let us investigate that. How do huh? bees make honey? No idea. To make honey, the worker honeybee sucks nectar oh. from flowers and stores it in its honey stomach. Once the worker bee returns to the hive, it vomits the nectar into a processor honeybee's mouth. Ew. In the processor bee's mouth and oh. stomach, an enzyme called invertase is added to the nectar. Invertase breaks some nectar into simple sugars like glucose and fructose. Huh? Then it vomits the partially converted nectar into another processor bee's mouth, who also adds more invertase, helping break down more nectar. This process goes on until most of the nectar is converted into simple sugars. Then, the mixture of simple sugars is stored in the honeycomb. Oh. At this point, the mixture is still watery. Hence, the bees flap their wings, which evaporates water and thickens the mixture to eventually...